Joe's Tori's doing, mixing and matching there at the end, conserving Mariano Rivera a little bit. He's on fire. He's back. All right, how about these numbers? Height, 5'8", weight, 173. Switch hitter, throws right, born November 27th, 1978. Is that already gotten big? No. <laughs> okay. Uh, what you won't find on the back of the baseball card of James Calvin Rollins oh. is this. This is Jay Rowe in the house. And this is my story, and it goes a little something like this. Oh, man. A guy named Scott Shore, who's with Good Sports Recordings, wanted to do a, um, a music CD involving ball players. You know, the athletes like music, want to be musicians, and, you know, of course, it's vice versa. You know, they thought I'd be a good pick, you know, around the ball club, at least I act like I'm a music man. Yep, just one of the many ball players. Feel in the groove, oh, say, can you sing CD available on MLB.com. Last licks for Kevin Kennedy. You going to break out in song? <sighs> no, I'll no, do it in thank verbiage. You. All right. <laughs> Should the Reds have let Danny Graves go? Uh, he wasn't pitching well, but you know what? I don't have a problem with him going to somebody else designated for assignment because I think uh, new blood, new life, a uh, new, se new season for him if he goes maybe somebody like Leo Mazzoni of the Braves. All right. Anybody going in Philly? Got a new manager in there now, a GM on his way out. The players have to accept responsibility. You found out it wasn't about Larry Boa. It's not about Charlie Manuel. It's about the guys in the field having to do the job. Let's talk about Schilling. Is he coming back in 05? Did he sell his soul last year? Uh, you know what? Maybe. You know, and he even said that in spring training. He's never really felt the same. Who knows? He's a leg drive pitcher. We don't know what we're going to have if you're a Boston Red Sox fan, so you can't worry about not having Kurt Schilling. All right, but what you can worry about, the Vipers, by the way, Coach Chris Collinsworth, the kids rallied from six runs down in the final innings. Congrats as we send you out to the ball game. The big kids trying to get it done. The rivalry, the Yankees, the Red Sox, and we got a brave fight in Atlanta as the Phillies try to stay afloat in the East. It's Fox Saturday Baseball, your game of the week. Have fun. Live from Charlotte, top drivers brave the circuit's most grueling race. Tomorrow, the Coca-Cola 600 on Fox. Find the home that's just right for your family now at Imperial Homes in Eddington. The quality-built Marlette show homes are certified for the state of Maine. Talk to John, Brian, Pat, or Jason when you visit Imperial Homes, Route 9, Eddington. And remember, it's not... At Town Auto Sales in Ellsworth, we do more than just sell cars. We have a complete service and repair center to make sure your car performs at its very best. Whether you need a tune-up or a transmission, the service team at Town Auto can help you get back on the road in good order. When you call, ask for Ed, our service manager, and he'll see that your car gets the VIP touch at Town Auto. Servicing all makes and models, Town Auto has what it takes to fix your car. Take your car to the pros at Town Auto Sales, 208 High Street in Ellsworth. That beautiful new home you've always wanted can be yours now at Imperial Homes in Eddington. See Brian, John, Pat, or Jason and have them show you the quality-built Maine certified Marlette Schultz Homes at Imperial Homes, Route 9, Eddington. Tomorrow's gridiron heavies clash in the NFL's black and blue proving ground. NFL Europe, tomorrow, only on Fox. Yankees. Over the last two years, the rivalry has reached a fever pitch. Don Zimmer and Pedro Martinez. That's all. Hero in game seven. Well, this only heightens the anger between these two teams. The Boston Red Sox have won the pennant. Another installment of sports' greatest rivalry next on Fox. Welcome to a Fox Saturday Baseball Game of the Week. The Boston Red Sox, the New York Yankees, their fans getting set to go on a beautiful day in the Bronx. Yankee Stadium and a matchup of two teams in the AL East. The Yankees have put it all together of late. And the Boston Red Sox trying to find their groove again. 
And now welcome to the broadcast booth everybody. I'm Joe Buck Tim McCarver in just a second. If you think about it two years ago it took seven games for the Yankees to get past the Red Sox in the ALCS last year seven games for the Red Sox to get past the Yankees and over the past three plus years almost 80 games played between them. It is split right down the middle yet Tim McCarver as you look at those spooky crazy kind of numbers. As these two teams meet today they're kind of going in different directions. Yeah it's kind of spooky and crazy as far as the Yankees and Red Sox have been concerned over the last two and a half weeks. The Yankees have gained eight games against the Red Sox. But why be surprised. I mean this is a Red Sox rotation missing Pedro Martinez missing Derek Lowe and they don't have Kurt Schilling. But Red Sox fans are thing, saying thank goodness we have Matt Clement. Matt Clement who is undefeated with the Red Sox is on the mound today for Boston. The other guy is David Wells who's been injured and has not been good since coming back. He'll pitch tomorrow in this series should be fun. Great day. Yankees and Red Sox. The rivalry is renewed. Fresh toasted Italian BMT sub from Subway restaurants, you'll forget everything else. I think he's dead. No, he, he's not dead. You know, a lot of people think rent to own is high prices, used merchandise, and payments that last forever, and they're right. But Aaron's is different. We're not rent to own. Aaron's sales and lease ownership has a guaranteed lowest prices. Brand new, brand name merchandise, 90 days same as cash, and you can own it in as little as 12 months. No wonder Aaron's is shaking up those rent to own stores. Well, I say, let them shake. Now, we all know I'm the best, but you may not use me as much as you should. And that's why I want you to meet my buddy here, the new IntelliClean system from Sonicare and Crest. He combines this special Crest paste with Sonicare technology, liquefies it, then drives it deep between teeth and into hard to reach places for a clean that's one step closer to, <clears throat> you know, the new IntelliClean system, one step closer to daily flossing. Hey, fellas, you gotta act right now. Click here and you're a winner. Click here and you're a Spammer, huh? Yeah. This exclusive offer is just for you. You know, we helped reduce the amount of spam our members reported by 75% last year. Oh, go. Wow, thanks for blocking them. Yeah, well, they're not just annoying. They can cause computer viruses or even identity theft. Well, hey, you two. You have been pre-selected to be an instant winner. Oh, never mind. Want a better internet? You belong at America Online. This copyrighted telecast is presented by the authority of the Office of the Commissioner of Baseball and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without express written consent. Uh, we've been here so many times for these games between the Red Sox and the Yankees, and Tim, it just does not get old. Doesn't stop. The newness of it doesn't stop. Keeps on coming. You saw Carl Pavano. Let's take a look at the... Batting order for the Boston Red Sox. Johnny Damon and Edgar Renteria. David Ortiz is the DH with Manny Ramirez in left. Trot Nixon is in right. Jason Veritek the catcher. The newcomer John Olrude with the Yankees last year at first. Bill Miller at third. Mark Bellhorn at second. And we will catch live the ceremonial first pitch with Adam Sandler and Chris Rock. Who we're going to come by here and stop in the booth and promote the longest yard they, they may I think we just witnessed a legitimate serious ovation for two guys walking out that aren't sports heroes to throw out the ceremonial first pitch and Chris Rock does not play on the football team in the longest yard and athletically now we know why he missed Jorge Posada by the longest yard <laughs> so Chris will 
head off the field, hang his head in shame. <laughs> Sandler did his part. Carl Pavano, the right-hander, who's four and two, and he's part of this rotation for the Yankees. It's taken off. And it's the rotation that's the reason why this Yankee team has won 16 of 18. And the rotation in particular has gone 15 and one during that stretch. One of the pitches for Carl Pavano is the changeup. Oh, Scooter. Hello, friends. It's Scooter. A changeup is just another word for a slow ball. While the batter is looking for a real fast pitch, the pitcher throws me really, really slow. Thank you, Scooter. Scooter forgot to mention that a good arm movement when uh, the changeup looks just like the fastball. And that's the case with Carl Pavano. He has the full assortment of pitches, two types of fastballs, a slider and a good changeup, as Scooter told us. He is unusual in that he does have power, but he's also a control pitcher. That makes him awfully tough. Take a look at how the Yankees play defensively behind Pavano. State Farm covers the field. We'll see how they line up. Womack is in left. He threw a guy out last night. That was Bellhorn at the plate. Matsui in center. Sheffield in right with Rodriguez Jeter. Robinson Cano is the hot new Yankee rookie second baseman with Tino Martinez at first. Flaherty doing the catching today, and off we go. Pavano, who's a Connecticut kid, grew up in a family that rooted for the Yankees. Now pitching for the Yankees. He's a guy that relatively young and has bounced around. That's well hit into right center field. Matsui back. How's this game going to start with a ball off the wall for the Red Sox. And off we go. Johnny Damon into second with a stand up double. In last night's ball game Damon started the game off against Randy Johnson with a broken bat infield base hit. And here on the second pitch of the game he just misses a home run by about two feet. So now the Red Sox have a runner at second nobody out it's Renteria Ortiz and Ramirez coming up to try to give Matt Clement the right hander who's five and oh the first inning lead. Renteria bunts. Pavano gets the out at first over to third goes Damon and Tim how many games did we watch with the Red Sox last year. And consequently, how many times do we see the Red Sox sacrifice a guy over to third? Zero? Not many. They have a different player batting number two this year, and that's Edgar Renteria. A lot of times, managers will give the hitter the option. Do you want to bunt him over, or if you think you can get him over by hitting the ball to the right side of the infield? Renteria chose the former. Now David Ortiz, the DH, digs his way in, hitting 276, 33 RBIs. 10 home runs. And the average is down for David and certainly down for the next guy, Ramirez. That's in the air to left field and should be enough to put the Red Sox on top. Womack comes up throwing. It's late, one to nothing, Boston on a sack fly by David Ortiz. And that was a National League style run. They appeal over third and say that Damon did not leave too early, so the Red Number Sox officially lead one to nothing on the sack fly by Ortiz to left. Four pitches into the game, and the Red Sox strike first. And they've produced a run with four pitches. Yeah. Last night, they had five straight base hits. Not only no runs, but two outs. Two runners in a row thrown out at home plate. During the sixth inning of last night's game, a game won by the Yankees. Ramirez grounds to third off the glove of Alex Rodriguez into left, and Manny Ramirez is on with a two out hit. And it's not to say that Alex Rodriguez should have come up with that ball to his left, but he didn't react very well, and it went off his glove. He slaps at it after getting back up and dusting himself off. This goes as a base hit for Ramirez. You can almost see the lack of a jump. And it takes us back to that conversation we had with Joe Torre last year, saying the difference between third and shortstop is that initial first step. That left shoulder, a lot of times you can't see the ball coming off the bat. And that appeared to be the case with Alex Rodriguez there. Saw so an interesting quote this week by Jose Oquendo. 
who's now on Tony La Russa's staff for the Cardinals. He said the difference between shortstop and third base shortstop you react first with your feet third base you react first with your upper body and your glove. And that's something that Alex Rodriguez in moving from short to third has had to deal with although this year he doesn't look as comfortable at third base as he did last year. Watch a delayed reaction to the left by Rodriguez. The ball is already halfway to him. Then he moves too late. Single for Ramirez. Now it's Trot Nixon at the plate. Runner at first, two out. One ball, one strike. There's the scooter changeup from Cravano. One ball, one strike. Nixon is hitting 338 over his last 20 games. And overall, he's hitting 307, six homers, 26 RBIs. He feels he may need surgery on his leg at the end of the season. Mixing and matching, trying to find the right days to play him, and he's late with that swing in the hole one and two. So the Red Sox, who jumped on top last night against Randy Johnson on a home run by Veritek. Led two to nothing, then three to one, then fell behind and lost six three. Lead today in the first inning, and Nixon takes a ball in the dirt as Ramirez bluffed over at first. This broadcast also available in Spanish by utilizing the SAP button on your television. The Red Sox have lost eight of eleven. They're five games out behind the Orioles. The Yankees have won 16 of 18 and they're three and a half games out in the AL East. What we said in the opening how rare is it for a world championship team to have three main cogs in their starting rotation missing the next year again Pedro Martinez Derek Lowe not with the Red Sox Kurt Schilling could be back after the All Star break. In fact, we talked to Terry Francona about Schilling. He said if we could give him a date, and we just don't know. We don't know. The medical staff doesn't know. Schilling doesn't know when he'll be able to come back and pitch. But we'd love to target that last day before the All Star break. Let him go three or four innings, and then you could take the entire bullpen and throw him out on the mound because you have that three day rest coming up. The 2 2. Tight full count. Ramirez will go at first. How about Pedro Martinez? How about the game he pitched last night? Eight innings, no runs, five hits, and a Mets one to nothing victory over the Marlins. Ten strikeouts, a save by Braden Looper. Pedro Martinez could be nine and one. There's no doubt about that. Bullpen has let him down. Three two pitch, and we'll do it again. The Mets are hanging in there in the NL East. You heard Jeannie say it earlier a battle between the Braves and the Phillies as the Phillies try to hang in. The Phillies start the day five out, that's it. The Mets are three games out behind the combo of Florida and Atlanta at the top of the division. Another 3 2, and Nixon grounds to Cano. For the top of the first inning, a double by Damon. Renneria got him over. Ortiz got him in. To the hill, Matt Clement. One to nothing, Red Sox. A symptom checker that allows people to isolate the warning signs of an illness and understand what they mean. Assessment tools that summarize risks and treatment options to discuss with their physicians. Just some of the features that make WebMD America's most trusted and most visited health site. Recommended by more physicians and relied on by more than 20 million Americans every month. WebMD, America's health site. Hello? Repeat after me in Espanol. No conexión. No conexión. No conexión. No. Hi guys, it's Maggie. Yes, I got the email. La Quinta. <laughs> it's tough out there, uh -huh. but here everything's a little brighter, a little warmer. Everything's La Quinta. 
world's upside down. Me too. I'm State Farm Agent Edmund Nelson, and this is a true story. Mommy broke the car. Thankfully, only the car broke. They were buckled in right. We showed her how to State Farm Child Safety Day. Saved their lives. By educating parents, conducting research, and helping to pass stronger safety laws, we've doubled the proper use of safety restraints and saved the lives of kids. Like mine. Like a good neighbor. State Farm is there. Fox Saturday Baseball brought to you by WebMD, America's health site, and by Chevy, the new Chevrolet's an American Revolution. Take a look at the Yankee lineup, and this is how Joe Torre stacks him up for this start against Matt Clement, the right-hander. Derek Jeter leads off at short, then Womack, who was a defensive star last night. Sheffield, Matsui, A-Rod, Tino Martinez, Jason Giambi back in there is D.H. He got the night off last night against the knuckleballer. John Flaherty and Robinson Cano is the second baseman batting the nine spot. On the mound is the right-hander, Matt Clement, as you said. The Red Sox thank the stars above every time this guy takes a mound that they signed him to a deal after he had three years with the Chicago Cubs. Yeah, through the first 10 starts of the year, Matt Clement has been Boston's best. Nobody would have thought that over the winter. They signed him as a free agent from the Cubs. A hard, heavy slider. And one of the big reasons for his success right there, left-handed batters batting about 100 points lower than right handed batters and that is very unusual. Clements a 30 year old from Butler Pennsylvania and a guy who has bounced around as I mentioned a free agent pickup but he came up with San Diego went to Florida went to Chicago and here he is with Boston and he would think his abilities would keep him with a certain franchise and an organization longer than a few years at a time as he gets one past the bat of Jeter who steps in hitting 305. That's an excellent point because you would think a, a guy like Matt Clement would be a guy like Mark Pryor or Kerry Wood of the Chicago Cubs or Dontrell Willis of the Florida Marlins obtained by the Marlins in the trade for Matt Clement. That's right. Came with Alfonseca for Dontrell Willis and Julian Tavares. And a deal between the Marlins and the Cubs. On 0 and 2, Jeter lays off one ball, two strikes. You mentioned Kerry Wood and the right-hander Mark Pryor. See what Clement did his last time out against Atlanta. Complete game, two earned runs. Both Wood and Pryor are going to end up on the disabled list. Wood's already there. Jeter is gone here. And Pryor, a slight fracture in his pitching elbow after getting drilled by a line drive yesterday in a Cub win at Wrigley. Take a look at how the Boston Red Sox cover the field. It's brought to you by State Farm. Ramirez in left, Damon in center, Nixon in right. Renteria is the shortstop, a two-time Gold Glove Award winner. Bellhorn and Olrood on the right side. Olrood is just recalled from the minor leagues, a place he hadn't been before. <laughs> and Veritek is behind the plate. Here's Womack. Strike one. Let's just get this out of the way right now. Okay. Dale Swain is not the third base coach last night in the game. Tim McCarver, a short while with the Boston Red Sox, steps into his uniform last night, sees the ball hit out to left. Tim McCarver's coaching third base. Womack's coming up throwing. Are you sending Bellhorn to the uh, play? Absolutely. Not even close. But the radio shows say no, Tim. It doesn't matter. Jeter struck out to start. Now the count's one and two on Womack. I mean, if you can't send a runner when you have the lead with a guy like Tony Womack in, in left field, you can never send the runner. All the talk shows we understand in Boston lighting up today saying about what a horrible third base coach Dale Swain is. And here was the play last night. Bellhorn out. Fine throw by Tony Womack. And then on the next play, Robinson Cano to Posada. Two runners in a row thrown out in the top of the sixth inning. And then the Yankees tied it and went ahead to win in the bottom half of the sixth. <laughs> Here's another one two pitch to Womack outside. So it's bad news for Swain that they're all talking about him on the call in shows today in Boston. But it's good news for Schilling because it'll give him something to do this week. 
Yeah, he has a, a talk show. That's right. And when he, he doesn't, he just calls in. That's right. He and Keith Folk both have talk shows in Boston. How many talk shows did you have when you were with the Cardinals <laughs> and the Phillies? None. My thoughts by Tim McCarver. I did do a show and tell on Captain No and his magical art <laughs> for three years. Really? For three years, yes, I did. Really? Yep. Every week, Captain No and his magical art, huge in Philly. Captain Noah, that is. Here comes a 2-2 uh, pitch. Womack takes it high and wide. You were a guest host on Pee Wee's Playhouse, too. <laughs> no, I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> it was one and two. Now it's three and two, and Womack is gone. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Clement to start the day. Base is empty. Sheffield will bat, and that's something Womack doesn't do a lot. He's a good contact hitter and rarely strikes out. Here's Gary. It's something Matt Clement doesn't do a lot either, and that's throwing high sliders. He has as much of a bite to his slider down as any right-hander in the game today. I wonder if Scooter knows anything about sliders. You think? I wonder if Scooter knows anything about Pee Wee's Playhouse. Indeed, cut from the same cloth. With the bases empty and two outs, Sheffield who hit a mammoth home run last night into the upper deck down the left field line takes a strike. But just to finish for a moment on Clement, the story was and the word around the league about Clement that got to the Red Sox when they were talking about signing him was that he was always a guy that had a reputation of having great stuff. But and this is how stuff gets started. They say he doesn't have the guts to be a big time winner on any team. And Terry Francona said, I'm telling you, this guy is the opposite of everything we had heard. Mm. So not only is he getting wins, but he's the kind of guy that Terry Francona has to grab by the jersey to drag him off the mound to take him out of a game, which is as important as the kind of stuff that he has. With that right arm. Here comes a 1 2 pitch to Sheffield. How about striking out the side to start the day for Matt Clement? Perfect first inning for the right hander, and we go to the second. He gets Sheffield after getting Jeter and Womack. 1 to nothing Red Sox after one. You don't eat steak with a butter knife. Don't drive a truck without the right equipment. Chevy Silverado Z71. Standard Vortec V8 to pull the weight. Off-road suspension to get through the tough stuff. Chevy, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. Now get up to 5,000 total cash back on select Silverado vehicles and inventory, but hurry, offer ends May 31st. See your local Chevy dealer today. Looking for the perfect home? Start your search at Prudential.com. Now you'll find more listings nationwide with more facts and photos and a Prudential real estate professional who can make it all a snap. Prudential.com. It's where you'll find the perfect home. Reach a new level of performance and boost your shave with new Mach 3 Comfort Gel. Designed to partner with all Mach 3 razors to make Gillette's best shave even better. New Mach 3 Comfort Gel. The best a man can get. Catch Major League Baseball all season long on Fox. Don't miss it. 
England's top chef. That looks like a dog's dinner. Is about to become TV's most brutal boss. Bingo! He's the Simon Cowell of the kitchen. He's way worse than Simon Cowell. Button it! Hell's Kitchen premieres at 9, 8 central Memorial Day on Fox. Memorial Day weekend. We welcome you back to New York and Jason Veritek, the captain for the Boston Red Sox, now wearing a C on his chest. This is our first game doing the Red Sox this year, and it is, in our opinion, stating the obvious. It's almost redundant that he has the C on his chest because he's been the de facto captain of this Red Sox team for the last handful of years. And there's the Yankee captain, but no C on that pinstripe jersey. Here's a 1-1. Good pitch, strike two from Pavano. It is so fitting for both players, two real leaders in the game, Jason Veritek and Derek Jeter. Look at the year he's having. He leads. He leads all major league catchers in five offensive categories. Five. First one of them is batting average, on base percentage, slugging percentage, home runs, runs. Two two. Outside. We were there on that day, Saturday afternoon at Fenway last year when he and Alex Rodriguez fought on A Rod's way down to first base in that game that Arroyo started as Veritek fouls it back. And a lot of people point to that day as when the Red Sox took on a different personality and figured they could beat the Yankees because they came back and won that game. On a walk off home run by Bill Miller against Rivera. And Veritek is on with a leadoff base hit. We showed you Paul Carl Pavano's change up grip. Let's take a look at, we talked about the full assortment of grips the fastball on the left, then the change, the split, and the slider. The interesting thing, look how not only Pavano, but most pitchers use the seams. For leverage. The seams of a baseball, as you know, are raised slightly, and pitchers use those seams to get leverage on all of their pitches. First pitch, a strike to John Olrud. And his first at bat of the year last year, Olrud ended the season with the Yankees. He had surgery on his left foot in November, and his availability or lack thereof down the stretch in the ALCS is one reason why a lot of Yankee fans believe without him at first base defensively they didn't win that series over the Red Sox. Boston signed him sent him to the minor leagues for a short while and here he is. That's in at the knees and that's strike two. Last year hit 284 homers 26 RBIs and 164 at bats. With the Yankees. That's into right field, and Olrud welcomes himself to the Red Sox with a base hit to right. Terry Francona's report was that he's not moving around very well because of a hamstring and that surgery on his left foot but he's still got that great swing and he showed it off here. See where Flaherty is setting up inside and Pabano hit the mid and Olrud shows that he is still quick on that inside fastball. And so two on with nobody out for Bill Miller. Miller has been hot of late and in his career is a 324 hitter against the Yankees. You've got Alex Rodriguez shortened way up at third as Miller takes a strike almost as if the Yankees were expecting a bunt. They wouldn't do that two times in the first two innings. Would they? I, I don't think so because not, not only is Miller a good hitter against the Yankees but Bellhorn strikes out too much and he's on deck. That's strike two, and Pavano needs a strikeout. Bellhorn leads the league in strikeouts, and there are the career numbers for Bill Miller against the Yankees. A couple of big hits in his career against Rivera. On the outside corner, one away. And Pavano picked the right time for his first strikeout. 
This is a surprise to Bill Miller because normally pitchers with good changeups don't use them on an 0 2 count. But Pavano shreds that outside corner. Outstanding changeup to get Miller. Not only a surprise on the pitch selection, but maybe a surprise to get rung up on that pitch by Hunter Wendelstedt, mm -hmm. the home plate umpire. Could have been outside. So two on one out. And here's Bellhorn. He takes a strike on the outside part. 53 strikeouts for Bellhorn. Kevin Euclid has taken some ground balls at second base for the Red Sox. And if you think about the right side of their infield, that could be the area that Theo Epstein and the Red Sox target to try to improve as we get deeper into the season. On the right side, they have had very little production. Only four home runs tied for last in the major leagues on the right side. Tied for last in RBIs. Close to last in runs scored. For the most part that's been a combination of Bellhorn and Millar who's on the bench next to Terry Francona today. Strike two on Bellhorn. Bellhorn's thinking here I am again. Standing at home plate, looking up at the scoreboard and seeing two strikes. <laughs> to the right side, the Yankees will get only one. First and third, two out. So Olroot is forced at second, and the inning will fall into the lap of Johnny Damon. Damon a double and a run scored his first time up. Center fielder Johnny Damon. Booze for a reason here at Yankee Stadium. Yankee fans remembering what Damon did in Game Seven and of that's last just year's about ALCS. All he did yeah, that's in right. The ALCS. Yeah. Talk about finding the right time to get hot. He was three for 29. In the series as the leadoff hitter for that lethal Boston lineup last year in the ALCS leading into game seven. Then he goes three for six with two home runs and six RBIs. And game seven to get the Red Sox to the World Series and they swept the Cardinals in four. Two and oh on Damon. Season average is good for third in the American League, 337. For a guy that's as good a hitter as Damon is, he's kind of got an odd swing where that top hand comes off the bat a lot. It's not always that fluid looking, but jumps at the ball. With that speed, he ends up jumping at it, using his legs, and getting a lot of hits. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the two elements of good hitting to wait and have quick hands. And Damon does neither. He doesn't wait and he doesn't have particularly quick hands when he gets the job done. He's the best two strike hitter in baseball this year. 333 with two strikes. Right now, the count is favored two balls and one strike. Bellhorn goes at first, and Damon has another hit. It's 2 0 Red Sox. Bellhorn will go to third. They'll hold him there on an RBI single by Damon, his 25th RBI, and the Red Sox double their lead. This is kind of what uh, Joe and I were talking about, about how Damon lunges at the ball. You get the idea of the top hand coming off the bat, a fastball inside. Second inside fastball, the first by Olroot in the inning. And now Johnny Damon driving in the second run. And now it's Renteria, who was four out of ten in his career against Pavano. Left side, Jeter in the hole, flags it down. Safe at second, it's 3-0, and there's going to be an argument about that call. A mild one put up by Cano, and I am anxious to see the replay of that as it's 3-0 Red Sox. 
It's a base hit into the hole for Renteria. He drives home the run and let's see how close this was at second. Ball uh, was hung up momentarily in Derek Jeter's webbing and then he had to go to the ground with his right hand. The jump and the throw. It was very very close. He was out at second base. I think that shot right there I think had Cano been a more experienced player he argues. But he's only 22 years old and a rookie. Second base umpire is Tom Hallion. It looked live like they got him out. Yeah. And on the replay, it certainly looks like the ball's in his glove. His right yeah. foot yeah. is on the bag, and Damon has yet to hit the base. Right. Either way, it's three nothing, and Ortiz takes outside to even the count of one and one. Any other Red Sox player, and the Yankees are coming up at the bottom of the second. But because of Damon's speed, speed is utilized in a lot of different ways. And that not only got the Red Sox a run, but got Renteria a hit. One and two on Ortiz. Seventh man to bat in the inning. Off the end of the bat. That's foul. So back to back two out RBI hits by Damon and Renteria. And David Ortiz certainly carried a big stick during the playoffs last year. As big a reason why the Red Sox won the World Series as anybody playing. The other guy who's as deserving of all the credit you could give is their manager Terry Francona. No question. We'll talk about that later. One two pitch. Inning over. Coming up for the Yankees. Matsui then a rod and Tino Martinez. Two teams of Clydesdales, 3,000 miles apart. One is coming from the west, the other from the east. This summer, Budweiser is traveling across this great nation, stopping to salute our country's everyday heroes, the men and women who make us proud to call America our home. When our Clydesdales eventually meet in the heartland to celebrate our freedom, we will once again remember those who serve all of us. At Budweiser, we take pride in our products and our country. American-owned, born here, brewed here. Budweiser. Well now, where's the fire, boys? Oh, fresh toasted sandwiches. Well, get those babies home before they get cold. Fresh toasted sandwiches from Subway restaurants. I'm hungry. You hungry? Sponsors of Greg Biffle and Car 16. Chevy, the best-selling full-size SUVs. Perfect for escorting all kinds of VIPs. Especially your own. The best-selling Chevy Tahoe, now with standard OnStar, including one-year safe and sound plan and stability track. Now lease an 05 Tahoe LS two-wheel drive for around $339 a month. Residency restrictions apply. Call for lease details. See your local Chevy dealer. Fox Saturday Baseball brought to you by Budweiser, the bright color and crisp, clean taste you'll only find in the King of Beers. We welcome you back to the Bronx. We move to the bottom of the second and Matsui up there swinging strike one. It'll be Hideki Matsui Alex Rodriguez and Tino Martinez three nothing Boston. Six hits already by the Red Sox. 
as we said are not only struggling losing eight of eleven they have lost all four games on a six game road trip we got the guy who's been their best in the rotation on the mound today as Matsui takes outside a ball and a strike. Hideki Matsui in 59 games against the Red Sox in his career has 48 RBIs and a 330 average. Strike two. Hitting the Red Sox very well last year through the first four games of the ALCS. And a lot of people, and I'm one of them, point to that knockdown pitch by Pedro Martinez in game five that quieted the bat of Hideki Matsui for the remaining three games. Really the top four in the lineup for the Yankees were silenced. Yep. After going up three games to nothing. Here it is. Last year game five the knockdown by Pedro Martinez. It's a very subjective thing. You never really know that that's one of the big reasons Matsui didn't hit after that. If you've been around the game uh, for a long time you have a pretty good idea that perhaps that was the case for the knockdown 12 out of 22 10 RBIs after the knockdown two for 12 no RBIs in one run scored but it was bigger than that for the top part of the Yankee lineup as they lost the final four games of the ALCS three balls two strikes now. So he keeps it that way. You look at the top four hitters Jeter, A Rod, Sheffield, Matsui. Combined games one through three, a 491 average, 18 RBIs. Four through seven, they combined to hit 167 with a home run and seven RBIs. And Matsui stays up there. That's after that pounding the Red Sox took in game three 19 to eight the Yankees had 22 hits and hit as many balls hard as I've seen in a nine inning game in, in, in my career to the point where before game four there were Red Sox players congratulating the Yankees and wishing them well in the World Series against the Cardinals. Red Sox players were right about the Cardinals and wrong about themselves. <laughs> that was told to me by John Lieber, who is now a pitcher for the Philadelphia Phillies. But John said that he's not going to mention any names, but there were some Red Sox players coming to some Yankee players and wishing them well in the World Series. In my experience, I've never really heard of anything like that. Matsui's putting on quite a battle with Clement, still three and two. Interesting shot. Eleventh pitch of the at bat. Matsui floats one into center for Damon. One out. Bottom of the second. Game break. It's Jeannie Zalasco. And it's a battle of the NL East in Atlanta Phillies. Jason Michaels singles home two runs. Top two and Philadelphia has the 2-1 lead as we sit top three. Desperate need of this win streak. At Wrigley, the Troy Hawkins on the way out. So is this baseball. Derek Lee gone. Rockies managed to tie it up at one apiece. Lee with his 15th home run and leading the National League. And who leads the AL in home runs? A Rod is at the plate. He is leading the AL and MLB in home runs. He shoots one to center off the wall, 408 feet away. And it's a ringing double with one out for Alex Rodriguez here in the second. Is he locked in or what? And you can see Veritek setting up inside. The pitch was outside. 
there's one slot where Rodriguez loves it. It's to where he can get those long arms extended. And he almost extended that one out of the ballpark. Up to the minute, Derek Lee with 15. The guy in front of him, Alex Rodriguez, with 17. He came close to 18. He has 398 career home runs. When he gets to 400, he'll be the youngest ever to do it. Martinez grounds to Olrude, who flips to Clement. Two out. A Rod at third. We look at what Rodriguez has done this season. Number one in the major leagues in home runs with 17. Number one in the major leagues in RBIs with 49. And number one in the major leagues in runs scored with 43. If you want to take that odd triple crown, taking average out, putting runs in, and taking the entire major leagues into consideration, that type triple crown. Nobody's won that in 44 years, and Babe Ruth did it six times in a 10-year stretch. Here's Jason Giambi with Rodriguez at third, two out. Giambi, 12 RBIs. He's been hitting better of late. But he has had a rough ride over the past year. Three guys. Close enough to shake hands on the right side. It's easy to point to the steroid use and the leaked testimony of the federal grand jury, the Falco situation, everything with Giambi, and say, well, that's clearly the reason why. But he had the pituitary tumor last year. He was sick. He's 34 years old. And his numbers have been in a steady decline, not just last year to this year, or two years ago to last year, but really since he got into a Yankee uniform. Rodriguez with a huge lead at third base. I mean, because Miller is so far off third base, Alex Rodriguez is almost halfway to home when Clement brings it to the plate so Clement's got to kind of keep an eye on Rodriguez I mean he could in essence walk home that's why he's pitching from the stretch a walk to Giambi first and third two out to talk about steroid use that's something that Jason Giambi had the press conference he never came out and said I did it they had the leaked testimony that got out and that was during the offseason that sparked Sparks between George Steinbrenner and the agent for Jason Giambi because they had the press conference and he never came out and flat out said it. This is a very emotional guy, a good guy, a very likable guy, Jason mm -hmm. Giambi, somebody his teammates enjoy playing with. Always has energy. Last year, that's that was the first sign when he was just sapped of all his energy, and then it turned out he had a benign tumor, in his pituitary gland. And you wonder if it's just a confluence of age, the sickness last year, whatever was going on with steroids, and you look at what's happened over the last five years in this fall, especially with the average, his on base percentage, if you want to add that in there, has gone down every year. It's too easy to just point at steroids and say that's it. That's into right, and that is it for the second inning for New York. A double, a walk, two left. Third inning, Red Sox bat up three zip. Back after this from your local Fox station. Tomorrow's gridiron heavies clash in the NFL's black and blue proving ground. NFL Europe, tomorrow, only on Fox. Meet the jack of all trades and the master of getting it done. The Cork dealership's nine new vehicle franchises add up to an unbelievable selection of quality trade-ins and program cars at Cork Used Vehicle Center, backed by a warranty three times better than any used vehicle warranty on the Hogan Road. Talk about choices, full-size vans for passengers or cargo, compact cars for great performance and greater mileage, mid-size SUVs, big on options, a sensible size, and sensational prices. Just talk to the jack of all trades and the master of getting it done at Cork Used Vehicle Center, Cork Auto Park, Hogan Road, back. Hi, this is Jeff Reynolds from Rectech. 
inviting you to come in and spruce up your RV for the season at our hold-in location located on Route 1A on the Bahava Road. You may also call us ahead at 989-3324. It's camping time, be looking for the red billboard sign. Having fun this summer time, get up, get out, and away. As a professional, EBS Building Supplies is a partner in your business. No project is too small or too big. With custom ordering and fast delivery, your client's projects will be complete on time and on budget. EBS has what you need at the right price. EBS is helpful service with a smile and a location near you. It's the EBS Advantage. EBS Building Supplies can do just ask. A huge inventory reduction sale is going on now at Bangor Chrysler Dodge. With special factory incentives, save over $9,000 on selected vehicles. Most models are represented, including Grand Caravan, Grand Pickups, PT Cruisers, Magnum, the all-new 300, Town & Country, and more. Supply is limited. Hurry for the best selection. No reasonable offer will be refused on these select cars, trucks, minivans, and SUVs. It's the inventory reduction sale in progress at Bangor Chrysler Dodge. You're watching WFVX Fox 22 Bangor. Aerial coverage for today's game, courtesy of the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company and its fleet of airships, reminding you to travel with peace of mind on Goodyear's new Assurance Tires. Third inning, four, five, and six hitters. Ramirez, Nixon, and Veritek against Pavano. Three-nothing Red Sox, and Ramirez, who somehow is hitting only 230, comes up empty, one ball, one strike. It's odd to look up and see this guy who came into the season a career 316 hitter hitting 230. It's his worst start for the first two months of the season since 1994 when he was a rookie in Cleveland. Another hit for the Red Sox. And Ramirez is two for two. I thought it was interesting that Damon talked about it. He said we're not going to out defense other teams. We may not out pitch other teams and with Schilling down and Wells not right. Low gone as you said earlier. Pedro Martinez gone. They're probably not. So what we have to do to win is out pound teams, out hit teams. And today the Red Sox have three runs on seven hits through two plus innings. Here's Nixon. And that's into right field. Didn't get it all. It'll carry out to the track for Sheffield. One on one out. That's why this Red Sox team is so much fun to watch. Their offense in particular. Now they beat the Cardinals in the first two games of the World Series last year and made eight errors in the first two games and still won. I was there and I didn't even know. <laughs> <laughs> one on one out for Veritek. We saw Terry Francona sitting in his manager's office before each game during the ALCS and having to ask him question after question first of all you had to take the temperature of the clubhouse because at one point they're down one game then they're down two then they're down three games to none getting pounded on that Saturday night game three and then all the decisions because of Schilling's ankle because where's Pedro Martinez going to pitch how are you going to handle an overworked and tired bullpen. Mark Bellhorn whether to continue to play him or not. How many opportunities did Terry Francona have last year to pull the wrong string make the wrong move rub somebody in his own clubhouse which is a kind of an odd clubhouse to manage anyway rub somebody the wrong way tick them off. I mean when you consider all that guy did last year the fact that he wasn't manager of the year I can understand because those votes come in I believe before the postseason begins but outside of that he deserves so much credit for the Red Sox finally winning the World Series for the first time since 1918 and in my opinion he gets virtually no credit for not only no credit but no money he's making five hundred and fifty thousand dollars Joe Torre makes more than ten times as much as Terry Francona now Joe Torre has earned every penny of that 
But you talk about a guy in an age of a lot of guys being overpaid. You mentioned Jason Giambi. The Yankees owe him 80 million dollars. Terry Francona makes no more than twice the minimum. The minimum in the major leagues for a player is like 350. He makes five hundred and fifty thousand dollars and that is a joke. You would think that with everything he brought and I worked with Mike Shannon in St. Louis he always said whatever manager figures it out at Wrigley Field with the Cubs and wins a World Series whatever manager whoever it is that does it for the Red Sox going to own the town. Yeah. I think it's just the nature of the call in shows and the controversy every day and things going on with Boston and that's the way it is and Terry understands that. And he's certainly not campaigning or being loud about it or anything else but that's a guy that is a manager that helped make the decisions to bring this team their first world championship that they should take care of. In a day and age where contracts are torn up and renegotiated. Whew. Tech fouls it out of play, still two and two. Every night we'd sit in that office. All right, Arroyo's in the bullpen tonight. I can use Fulk for an inning, that's it. I can use him for two innings tonight. Timlin, he's not available. Embry, he's tired. I mean, that was a worn out pen that they mixed and matched the last four games of the ALCS. They end up making baseball history. 2 2 pitch. Rolled over to the right side, base hit. Ramirez will turn and hold. It's first and second, one out. And Veritex two for two. Robinson Cano, uh, perhaps a little bit too close to second base, and cheating a little bit too much. Uh, a lot of young middle infielders okay. will do that. And a ball that normally wouldn't trickle through gets through on the right side. See Cano a little too close to second base. And Veritek with a second hit. Eight hits now for the Red Sox. Here's Olrud who singled his first time. That's out of play down the left field line. 19 hits in the two games so far in this series for the Red Sox. And John Olrud, who was a guy who I guess eight years or so ago was the one that people Thought could flirt with hitting 400 for a season. One for one. Led the American League in hitting with the Toronto Blue Jays, batting 363. And you mentioned earlier, he prior to this year, he had never played in the minor leagues right off the campus of Washington State University in 1989 to start the his career and a great career with the Toronto Blue Jays. Three hit 363 with Toronto. Takes ball one outside. This has been two plus innings for Pavano, where he has labored to get some outs. Career 295 hitter. We've been a guy that's shown a ton of power. He can hit. That's just outside. Pavano thought he had out number two instead. It's ball two. Sometimes you can read a pitcher by what he did the time before. Olrud getting a base hit on a fastball inside. And with two strikes, Pavano misses away. He'll go away again. And Olrud had a pretty good rip. The 93 season, Olrud, when he hit 363, hit his career high in home runs with 24. Yankee Stadium right now about as quiet as John Olrud. That's down and away full count. Pavano seems to be intent on making the perfect pitch with two strikes. Very very good point Joe. And he's getting himself into deeper trouble. Olrud hitting a double play candidate. You have a three run lead. You have to send the runners right here. They don't go, and Olrud fouls it out of play. Terry. <laughs> so 
don't know if Terry Francona we just caught him at the end of a little signal out to Dale Swain. It looked like he was waving. Let's see if that means wave goodbye to the bases boys and start <laughs> running. Nose chin nose get them going please run now they're running and a ground ball off Pavano that'll stay on the infield throw to first for the out. Olu can't run at all and it's second and third two down. One six three on the put out and even with all that stuff going on prior to the out Olrud was out by two steps. Got a bad foot and a bad hamstring. That's just, if, had he hit this ball uh, prior to that with the runners not going Derek Jeter may have had a chance to throw to Cano to get the double play. That's how slow Olrud is. But fortunately fortunately for the Red Sox Terry Francona on that second three two pitch sent the runners. I think somebody missed the sign somewhere. That first 3 2 foul ball by Olu. Miller strike one. So now we know the Red Sox sign for start the runners. <laughs> nose chin, nose chin. Do the duck dance thing. All right, might, might have, yeah, nose chin and then the talk to them. <laughs> Here's an 0 1. To the right side, Tino Martinez stays down on it. The inning is over. Two hits in the frame for the Red Sox. They have left five. Bottom of the third inning. Da -na 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 Three nothing, Boston. Bottom of the third. So you want to open a checking account? Yes, but I don't want to pay for it. Right. And you want online banking? Right, if it's free. And unlimited online bill paying. I don't want to have to pay for that either. No, no. 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 So you want total security protection on your check card free? Look, I just don't think I should have to pay for any of it. Neither do we. Free checking plus 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 with direct deposit from Bank of America. Higher standards. The new Digital Rebel XT. An 8 megapixel, easy to use SLR. Virtually no delay when you snap the picture and with the ability to shoot at three frames per second, you'll never miss the opportunity to catch the impossible. The next generation Digital Rebel XT, official camera of the NFL and future NFL players everywhere. Who came up with the thong? He was short on material and he used what he had. Their business bag. I know a dude selling Cadillac wheels. He ain't got no damn car. Their schemers. I'm dating this lady right now. I don't want to marry her for her money, but I don't know how else to get it. Cedric the Entertainer. Mike Epps. John Leguizamo. Why are you gonna call the cops? I'll give you the money on Friday, right? Mom. Mom. The Honeymooners. Hey. Money for the blind dog. Rated PG 13. Start Friday, June 10th. The summer's biggest thriller isn't in theaters. It's still out there, people. It's on Fox. He wants them to suffer. The Inside series premiere Wednesday, June 8th. Viewer discretion advised. This is kind of exciting. Glad we can entertain you. George Washington Bridge here in New York as we move to the bottom of the third. Red Sox on top 3-0 and Robinson Cano takes a strike. Question is, how good is this guy going to become? Notorious since day one, even when Cano started his Yankee career struggling with the bat. Robinson started two for 23, and he's hit 340 since. Was comparing Cano to Rod Carew with Pop. He hit a big home run last night for New York, his last 14 games. He's got 10 RBIs, eight runs, and he seems to be getting better and better. At least more comfortable defensively at second base at this level as well. This past week, he hit a third deck home run against Detroit and then tied the game last night against Boston. That is four strikeouts. 
for Matt Clement one out here in the third tomorrow NASCAR on Fox returns with Nextel Cup racing from Charlotte with the Coca Cola 600 defending champion Jimmy Johnson looks to extend his lead in the driver's standings and defend his title against the world's best drivers NASCAR racing from Charlotte tomorrow at 5 p.m. Eastern to Pacific in high definition only on Fox. Jimmy Johnson's won the last two Coca Cola 600s. Ryan Newman and Jeff Gordon will start from the front row. So there you have it tomorrow night racing on Fox and Clement hits Jeter and the crowd reacts and so did Clement after that ball hit Jeter he wanted everybody in the stadium to know it was an accident. And Jeter who was pounded what a week ago today right in the Mets game gets hit with protection on that left elbow where he got hit last Saturday we'll see where this one caught him. Matt Clement does not have any kind of reputation as being a headhunter even though he does lead the majors this year and hit batsman that is the seventh hit batsman of the year it looked to me like a slider that got away from him backed up and hit Derek Jeter in right below the left armpit. But whether it was a fastball or a slider, in my view and in your view, I'm not speaking for you, no, Joe, but uh, uh, there was no way that Matt Clement meant to hit Derek Jeter, not with a three run lead. That's Tony Womack. Most of the majors, he's hit seven. And Jeter wasn't trying to add any fuel to the fire, it just hurt. No, right. right. Womack takes a strike. Womack struck out his first time hitting 270. Talked about Womack and left. He had Tommy John surgery. That left elbow that was drilled last week at Shea. Womack had Tommy John surgery leading into last season. He had a tough time making throws from second base. Now he's playing left field. And last night he came up throwing and took care of Bellhorn with a perfect peg to the plate. In a, about a five minute span the game between the Yankees and Red Sox completely turned around and his throw is what started it. I think in football you can see how tough you have to be to play the game basketball the same way along with their great athleticism hockey they have fights break out all the time baseball is much more subtle in determining how tough you have to be to play the game. Because it's a 162 game schedule over 181 days. The bumps, the bruises, the knots, the swellings for a guy who plays every day are considerable, even for the umpires, yes. Last night got a foul tip that hit just above his right wrist. That's Bruce Fremming at third. Here comes a one-two pitch. Tough to turn two with Womack running. Bellhorn in the middle. They can't do it. And the inning continues for Gary Sheffield. Not hard hit. Walmack can fly. And force out 6 4. Jeter has had a, an eventful wraparound week. We talked about being hit last Saturday. Watch this play on Wednesday night against the Tigers. Cano underneath. It looked like a sea of twos out there. Jeter number two, Cano number 22. 222 made the play. Just a brilliant play by Derek Jeter on Wednesday night against Detroit. How do you hang on? I don't know. To the ball. Yeah, you'd think that uh, the collision with the ground would jar it loose, but it didn't. Here is Sheffield who struck out in the first. Runner at first, two out. Numbers for Sheffield who when the Yankees were at Shea had to tell Joe Torre that his left hand was bothering him he couldn't grip the bat. The pitch by Clement Sheffield missed it by plenty one ball one strike he had tendonitis in his left hand. He refused a cortisone injection because he thought that would keep him out even longer. Even with better long term benefits he got back in the lineup and started hitting again. 
Yankees swept Detroit. They won last night. Season high six games over 500. Womack is running. Veritek's throw too late. No chance with that jump. And stolen base number 16 for Tony Womack. It's only been caught three times. A very, very good jump. He's in motion four feet to second. And a late throw by Veritek. Jason had no chance to get Womack. It's a different element for the Yankees. Rodriguez, A Rod led New York with 28 steals last year. Womack is only 12 shy of that right now as the Yankees play in their 49th game. Here's a 2 1 to Sheffield. Up and away, 3 and 1 on deck, Hideki Matsui. Two on, two out, tying run coming up. Matsui, the Bank of America Players of the Week. Mark Teixeira of the Texas Rangers and Pat Burrell of the Phillies. This past week, Burrell hit 500. Teixeira with that Rangers team that can just pound the ball. Richard Adalgo is red hot for the Rangers. Kenny Rogers is one of the best pitchers in the game this year. And the Texas Rangers, if you haven't looked lately, are tied for first in the AL West with the Angels. Also Jim Tomey back for the Phillies. Tomey with a home run in last night's game against Atlanta. And did the Phillies ever need the bat of Jim Tomey in that lineup. Two on two out for Hideki Matsui who hasn't homered since the first week of the season. He's driving in runs. He had three home runs. In the first four games of the year and that's it. He's gone 176 at bats without going deep. Yeah, here we are in Memorial Day weekend and no good memories so far for Yankee fans. Two on two out no balls one strike. That's foul down the right field line strike two. You want to be specific the cleanup spot for the Yankees. A two hundred million dollar team has a total of two home runs. Whatever lineup Joe Torre has put out there the cleanup spot for the Yankees has hit two home runs. For a team that is. Right now one of the most dangerous. In the major leagues yeah, and for a team whose nickname is the Bombers. And they've hit sixty two home runs. But only two out of that cleanup spot. And 0 2. Inning over. Clement gets strikeout number five. The Yankees have stranded four. We go to the fourth. Red Sox on top. Three zip. one thing baseball fans can agree on it's Major League Baseball on XM Satellite Radio every team all season long and now for a limited time buy an XM Satellite Radio and get a second radio free so you can enjoy even more music news sports and talk XM Satellite Radio if you're a disgusting damaging or destructive bug watch carefully cause this is the last thing you're ever gonna see Presenting Ortho Bug Begone Max, the best lawn bug killer ever made. So strong, it kills bugs three times longer than the leading competitor. Not just one month, but three full months guaranteed. Bug Begone Max, lights out for lawn bugs. Time to look at stars in a 
whole new light. The full line of Star Motorcycles. For a limited time, get special financing on any Star Motorcycle. Looking for the perfect home? Start your search at Prudential.com. Now you'll find more listings nationwide with more facts and photos and a Prudential real estate professional who can make it all a snap. Prudential.com. It's where you'll find the perfect home. Play the Star Wars Choose Your Destiny game with BK. Every game piece can win. Win and you can choose between a Star Wars video game and Xbox or PlayStation 2 format. A Lincoln Navigator or a Lincoln Aviator. A million dollars or a million dollars. Choose your destiny wisely. Star Wars Episode 3 now playing. Saturday Baseball is brought to you by Burger King. It reminds you to have it your way. By Pepsi, it's the Cola. And by XM Satellite Radio with live play-by-play -play of Major League Baseball games for every team all season long. We move into the fourth inning. The number nine man for the Red Sox, Bellhorn. Then back to the top, Johnny Damon and Edgar Renteria. Against the right-hander, Carl Pavano, who has scattered eight hits. The Red Sox have three runs. 1 0 pitch. Bellhorn flies it to center. Pretty well hit. Matsui back at the track for out number one. This week in Major League Baseball history, May 25th, 1935, Babe Ruth of the Boston Braves hits three home runs at Forbes Field. It's a 600 foot home run that clears the roof in the seventh inning, which is his 714th home run and last. America's Beer salutes America's pastime. Budweiser, proud sponsor of Major League Baseball. For more information, log on to foxsports.com on MSN, keyword baseball. Here's Johnny Damon out in Monument Park. One ball, one strike. Next Thursday, by the way, uh, marks the 70th anniversary of Babe Ruth retiring from the Boston Braves. Two balls and a strike. Damon's two for two with a run scored and an RBI. Three and one. Three and two. And as we said, Damon is a 333 hitter this season with two strikes. So he was willing to take that 3 1 pitch. Sharply to Cano. One. Two out. And the batter will be Renteria. Bellhorn fly to center. Damon grounds out. Renteria is coming up. He is one for one with an RBI infield single. If you just read about the crowd reaction, and about what's being said about Edgar Renneria without looking at any of the numbers you might be surprised to see that he's hitting 273 the word around baseball is that he's been a failure in Boston to this point gave him a four year 40 million dollar deal they let Cabrera who was a big part of their world championship last year walk away signed Renteria away from St. Louis outbid the Cardinals for him. His track record tells you he'll be better over the next three months of the season when it gets warmer and warmer. And he is, in my estimation, I've seen a lot of him, one of the elite players in the game. And I think it's only a matter of time before he settles in a little more and starts showing them. And defensively, he is terrific. Two and two. Dusty Baker the manager of the Chicago Cubs told us last year that he was the smartest player in the National League. Long term contracts put undue pressures on certain players and I don't think Edgar is an exception to that. Renteria into center with a two out hit and he is on base for the second time today. In a good spot in this lineup in front of David Ortiz, and David will bat with two out. Five out of six now in the series, plus a walk for Renteria against Yankee pitcher. Joe, does this uh, 
almost gives you, it's kind of a flashback type game. I mean, last Saturday, Randy Johnson gave up nine hits over the first three innings to the Mets. They scored only two runs. Today, nine hits through the first three and two third against Pavano, and the Red Sox have scored only three runs. Randy Johnson last night got through six innings. But I think it's fair to say that anybody that watched him was not his dominant type self that the Yankees really are still waiting to see since they made the deal with the Arizona Diamondbacks. Good six innings, gave up a lot of hits. Defense helped him out. And then his hitters went to work in the bottom of the sixth and put him in line for the victory, which he picked up. 2 0 now on Ortiz. Renteria is running, and Ortiz chaps it foul. Talked earlier about the combination of Ortiz and Manny Ramirez and their season comparison last year to this year. David Ortiz who any way you look at it had a career year in 2004 is hitting 276. Look at the numbers with runners in scoring position for both he and Ramirez. Three and one now and Pavano is working his way back into trouble. Pitch number 80 on the afternoon is coming right here on three and one to David Ortiz. And it's ball four to put two on with two out. First walk handed out by the New York right hander. I think uh, your comment was right on the money last inning when you said that Carl Pavano is trying to make the perfect pitch. That's why he's falling behind. It is. Uh, it's something from a catching standpoint that you can really control. I mean, you can go out and tell him, quit trying to nitpick so much. Throw the ball down the middle of the plate and let the natural action take over. Try to make the perfect pitch. You're not going to. The two on, two out. Ramirez takes high for ball one. Did you ever have to? Or get the chance to say that to Bob Gibson. Uh, yes, I did. Yeah, here comes Mel Stottlemyre out there right now, and may be telling him exactly that. Yes, I did, and we had <laughs> predictably arguments because of that. Steve Carlton, a lot of pitchers, uh, they're just trying to help, and they don't look at it like that in the heat of competition. At home this year for Carl Pavano. Compared to on the road, four starts, three and one, and an ERA of one and a half. I mean, when you when you think about a catcher's relationship with the pitcher, I mean, pit, pitchers are eccentrics. They are arguably the most eccentric people in all the major sports. They initiate the action. They're alone out there. When they before they do initiate the action, I, I'm not trying to. I mean, what, are you psychological on the, I put you, you on the couch didn't oh I? come on well I mean I mean really it's it's an odd position it's an eccentric position a week long <laughs> conversation about therapists <laughs> and I've laid you down on the couch Tim I apologize that's into left field that pitch was up Ramirez jumps on it it's four nothing Boston a two out rally a hit a walk and the third hit of the day by Manny Ramirez. And Ramirez eyes lit up when that pitch sailed in upstairs. Yeah, when Pavano falls behind, it looked like a hanging slider. You hang sliders to a guy, whether he's hitting poorly or not, he's not going to hit poorly for a long period of time. And Ramirez has fired out of that mini slump this afternoon with three straight singles. And three straight base runners with two out. Here's Trot Nixon. Nixon 0 for 2. It's grounded out, flyed out, takes a ball.
2 and 0. I, I, by the way, I'm not saying that pitchers are the only eccentric professional athletes. You got the Maynard G. Krebs look for Clement. It's an eccentric look. He's sitting at Starbucks and read poetry. 2 0 pitch. He was on the outside corner, 2 and 1. Sipping on a liquid mocha almond fudge. Double half calf. <laughs> Latte soy. <laughs> Out of play down the left side. It's two and two. Mike Stanton, the left hander, is getting loose for the Yankees in their bullpen. I don't think he's throwing 190. Perfect. Two and two, two on, two out. A run in and a four to nothing Boston lead. Nixon out in front, pops it up. Flaherty gives it a look and it's out of play. Last night a 6-3 final. The Yankees won game one of this set. Tomorrow, David Wells will pitch for Boston. That's a night game. Take on Mike Messina, who is on a four game winning streak. Nixon floats one into center field. That's going to get down. Big David Ortiz coming to the plate, no throw, and it's 5 0 Boston here in the fourth. And the Yankee fans are restless. With Veritech coming up, that might be it for Pavano. Nixon hits it off the end of the bat. It looked like a changeup, and Matsui respecting Nixon's power. By the time he got to it, he couldn't even get the slower foot, David Ortiz. And the Red Sox up by five here in the fourth. Pavano can't get through four. Torrey is going to hand the ball to Stanton. Five to nothing here in the fourth. Walk me through this. Mr. Goodwrench can service an entire car. I guess you could call it a one-stop shop. I could, but I won't. And you can't make me. What you doing? Goodwrench maintenance. It's like a physical for your car. That makes you a cardiologist. <laughs> Obviously, I'm joking. Find Mr. Goodwrench at all GM dealerships nationwide. And try it now. <laughs> I knew if I wanted to get better, I had to do something different. I had to make a change. And since I started using Callaway golf equipment, people ask me what I'm playing. I'm playing the best golf of my career. That's what I'm playing. Play the Star Wars Choose Your Destiny game at BK. Look within and choose which side to scratch off. Win and you could choose between a BK breakfast sandwich or a Whopper sandwich. A Beaches Resort family vacation in Jamaica or the Turks and Caicos. A Sony Dream System home theater or a Sony Plasma TV. Every game piece can win. Star Wars Episode 3 now playing. Reach a new level of performance and boost your shave with new Mach 3 Comfort Gel. Designed to partner with all Mach 3 razors to make Gillette's best shave even better. New Mach 3 Comfort Gel. The best a man can get. At some point, I realized that my money was no longer just money. It was real estate, art, antiques. And as my assets grew more complex, the more I came to appreciate the private bank of Bank of America. They're the only private bank that has the depth and breadth of expertise to manage all areas of wealth. Whether that's oil fields, oil futures, oil paintings. The private bank of Bank of America. Higher standards. If you've got to see it to believe it, you're in New Orleans. Stop resisting! A full hour of cops. Then, this patrolman was murdered. Can new evidence help find the killer? All new America's Most Wanted. It all starts at 8, 7 central tonight on Fox. Casey 
case you've been stuck in traffic somewhere that's what's transpired up to this point in the game Carl Pavano 88 pitches on the afternoon he can't get through four and that means that Mike Stanton has to take over pitch to Veritek two on two out two runs in in the inning and all this started with a two out hit by Renteria a walk to Ortiz Ramirez an RBI hit the same for Nixon lights are on here at Yankee Stadium. Ten minutes to three o'clock in the east and Veritek way late with that swing. Strike one. And it's uh, so odd if you followed Mike Stanton's career to find him in a game in the fourth inning. He was a stopper for the Braves back in the early 90s then a setup man during the late 90s for Joe Torre. Mariano Rivera. It's easy really to track the history of this bullpen the recent history for Joe Torre with the Yankees. Stanton was there for a lot of it. When we first saw this group in Torrey's first year in 96 it was Rivera setting up Wetland who was the MVP of that 96 World Series win against Atlanta. And when Wetland moved on it was Stanton and Jeff Nelson setting up Rivera. Mm -hmm. Veritek strikes out and off we go into the bottom of the fourth. Stanton does his job. Yankee hitters have to try and do theirs. They have only one hit. Bottom of the fourth, down five. You don't eat steak with a butter knife. Don't drive a truck without the right equipment. Chevy Silverado Z71. Standard Vortec V8 to pull the weight. Off-road suspension to get through the tough stuff. Chevy, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. Now get up to 5,000 total cash back on select Silverado vehicles and inventory, but hurry offer ends May 31st. See your local Chevy dealer today. get better I had to do something different I had to make a change and since I started using Callaway golf equipment people ask me what I'm playing I'm playing the best golf of my career that's what I'm playing hey Johnny What's up? We're picking up some stuff for the Baseball Hall of Fame exhibit. You got anything you want to contribute? What do you got so far? Uh, some infield dirt, bloody sock and shilling, you know, stuff like that. How about this? Whoa. Wore that one in game four. Yeah, this would be great. Thanks. Yeah, no problem. DHL, delivering America's pastime on time. I'm Jeannie Zalasco at the Fox Network Center. So you haven't seen enough home runs this season? You haven't been watching Derek Lee. Not one who flipped two on the day, giving the Cubs a healthy lead. Lee now has a National League leading 16 on the season. One shy of the Major League leader who's gearing up in Big Apple. And he hit that off the guy that used to be Byung Hun Kim. He's trying to resurrect his career in Colorado. That's a bad place for a pitcher to try to resurrect their career. Like some storms may be moving in. The lights are on. Darkening skies here at Yankee Stadium. And Rodriguez swings through strike one. Going to be a two-guy race for National League MVP. It looks like this year. Derek Lee and Albert Pujols. The difference is Derek Lee and the Cubs are eight and a half games out in the NL Central. Tough to win an MVP, although the guy at the plate did on a team that finishes way down the street, as some guys used to say. The 0-2 pitch up the middle. And Rodriguez is two for two. Lead off man is on. And we remind 
Remind you, Fox Saturday Baseball is brought to you by Chevy, the new Chevrolet's in American Revolution. Lead off man is on. Tino Martinez walks in. Jeter, who has the elbow that was hit last Saturday at Shea Stadium by Chris Benson, got hit in the back today. Tino Martinez takes one that gets away. And Veritek looks surprised that he didn't have it. Down to second on the we'll wait and see if it's a wild pitch or pass ball is Rodriguez with nobody out. Sometimes the delayed reaction like that means that the ball went through the webbing of the glove. Nope, it hit the heel of the glove and then came up and hit the shin guard. But you're right, uh, Veritek could not find it. Usually, if a ball does hit the ground first, it's a wild pitch. And that one, no exception. So the wild pitch down at second is Rodriguez. Nobody out. As a mist starts to fall here at Yankee Stadium. 2 0. And out the talk is Veritek. Bit of an overstatement, but talking about Derek Lee, for a guy this early in the campaign, the only other Lee that had that much success was Robert E. <laughs> I mean, he has been hitting everything. You think of the Chicago Cubs without Derek Lee. I mean, their offense is almost non existent without him. For those of you who came into this, Series between the Red Sox and Yankees talking about Rodriguez a rod trying to prove that he could do it against the Red Sox. He's been on base all six times he's been to the plate in this series. And then people say yeah well it's May. Wait till September and then October. And let's see what he does then. Three and oh is the count on Martinez and the Yankees trying to put. A little rally together here down five zip in the fourth. And those aren't close. Third walk by Clement and Tim. If there was one knock on Clement, forget the heart and all that stuff we talked about earlier. The actual things you can put your hands around as statistics, it's walks that have slowed his success down since he's come to the big league. Yeah, walks and non walk moments. There are some walks that are understandable with first base open. You have a tight even with two outs runners on at first and second things like that. You don't understand the lapses in concentration in a situation like this. I mean you've got a five run lead and you've got a pitch like it. Now it's Giambi who walked his first time in a key spot for the Yankees. Fastball strike one. Yeah, you think about how odd the first two hitters were. He gets 0-2 to Alex Rodriguez. The time he should have thrown a ball, he throws a strike and then can't hit the strike zone with Martinez up walking him on four pitches. Runners on at first and second, nobody out. The 0-1. To the right side, that ball comes up. Olru gets the middleman down to first, safe as it gets away from Clement. Olru made a fantastic gutty play, throwing down to second, and the Red Sox should have turned two, but Clement didn't make the catch on the return throw from Renteria. You're right with a five-run lead. Normally, you don't take this chance. You take the out at first base. The throw was perfect to Renteria. Renteria's throw was perfect to Clement. And Clement drops the ball. You can see Clement's there. May have had his foot off the bag, but if he catches the ball, I think they get the call. So it's first and third, one out. Digging in is the backup catcher for New York, John Flaherty. It's a force out 3 6 and they're giving Clement an error. I didn't think you could assume a double play. I didn't either. I was thinking the same thing. Normally you don't, don't anticipate a double play. 
But I guess the thinking on that is that had Clement held on to the ball, he would certainly have completed the double play. The rule forever has been you don't assume a double play right. and you don't right. get an error if they get the one out. Mm -hmm. First and third one out here and one ball one strike on Flaherty. Clement has struck out five. Anyway it stands right now force out three six E one. And it's first and third one out. One ball one strike on Flaherty. Only a one sixty seven hitter with runners in scoring position. Two and one. A lot of times some players take on characteristics of their hitting instructors their hitting coaches you can see how Flaherty holds that bat flat and droops it behind his bat. That's what Donnie Matt Mattingly used to do. Jorge Posada is taking a similar approach to hitting. That was a pitch that Clement just got away with two balls two strikes. What a great player. And man, the left of your screen was. Matting ball game. He didn't miss many of those pitches that Flaherty just fouled back. No, he didn't. <laughs> and his career had just over 300, and it's a shame in many ways that his career was in the in between time between the Yankee power seasons and championship seasons. 2 2 pitch. Maritech. Scoops it up. Don Mattingly's last year was the 95 season, which is when the Yankees lost the Mariners the first round of the playoffs. And they went on this run under Joe Torre in 96 after he took over for Showalter. 1985 AL MVP, and he came in after those great teams of the late 70s and playing into the early 80s. 3-2 mm -hmm. pitch. Two out. Big strikeout for Clement, and that's number six on the day. Clarity cannot catch up to the high fastball. You know, look at Matt Clement over the years. You're just not used to seeing him throw and be successful throwing pitches up in the strike zone, but he's done that this afternoon. So it's up to the rookie Robinson Cano to rescue the inning. Cano struck out his first time. He has driven in 11. Went deep last night. And golfs one into right field for Nixon. The inning comes to a close. A hit, a walk, an error, two left. Yankees have left six. Go to the fifth. Five nothing Boston. You have won a million dollars. Brendan, I am your father. No, you're not. You just want my money. Brendan, I am your uncle. Brendan, wait. Play Choose Your Destiny at BK. Every game piece can win. Star Wars Episode Three now playing. You know, our competitors in the rent-to-own industry have a funny way of treating customers. They charge more over a longer period, but because they have weekly instead of monthly payments, the price seems less. Aaron's has brand new, brand name furniture, electronics, appliances, and computers for the guaranteed lowest price and no credit checks. Our competition doesn't think you're smart enough to do the math. Well, I think you're smart enough. So do you know what I said? To the bank guy? Yeah. I said I wanted free checking with no minimum balance, plus free online bill paying. Plus I want lots of your ATMs so we don't have to worry about those fees. Because I don't think we should have to pay for any of it. And do you know what he said? Goodbye. He said we don't think you should pay for it either. Oh. Free checking with no minimum balance, plus, 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 from Bank of America. Higher standards. I hear that you guarantee all your work. Is that true? Yes. Can you have our van ready in time for the canoe trip this afternoon? Absolutely. Are your 3,000 certified mechanics guided by the ideals of the young voyagers? He's one of us. 
Visit Midas and get brake pads or shoes for $39.95 plus installation. We'll provide a written estimate for installation and fully explain any additional work needed. For mechanics known for their work and their word, trust the Midas touch. Family Guy's in your face with all new episodes. I got a makeover, Dad. Honey, I always thought you were beautiful. <laughs> oh, God. Couldn't do that with a straight face. When Animation Domination returns Sunday, June 5th on Fox. Viewer discretion advised. As we move into the fifth inning, John Olrood will lead off for the Boston Red Sox against Mike Stanton, who had to help the Yankees get out of the fourth. And Olrood hits it off Stanton to Cano. A bare hand pickup. He didn't have to do it with Olrood running, but he makes the play 1 4 3 on the putout. That's twice now that Olrood has bounced one off a pitcher. Last time to Jeter, this time to Cano for an out. And it hits uh, Mike Stanton in the right spot. This that's easy for me to say. Mike appears to be all right. You're going to get hit. You want to get hit there. Now it's Billy Miller. 0 for 2. Two years ago, the American League batting champ. Turns around, bats right handed, takes a strike. We talked about the official scoring ruling on that double play. And there's one caveat with regard to assuming a double play. And that is if a fielder, it's 10.14, rule 10.14, quote unquote, muffs a throw at first base, a word you typically hear in football, which is what Clement did. That's why he got the error. Right now it's one on one out. Moments ago we had a chance to talk with Joe Torre. Joe Torre, a couple of things. First of all, what's been lost in your team winning 16 of 18 is what your starters have done, going 15 and one during that stretch. But Pavano just didn't have it today. No, he, he just uh, he couldn't put anybody anybody away, Joe. He he got uh, he threw some strikes, got ahead in some counts. But when it came time to uh, get strike three or, or make them reach for a pitch, uh, it, it was too good or they just laid off it. So, it, yeah, the, you're right. Our starting pitching has been the main reason why everything else on this club has been straightened out. I feel like we're all being reminded this year how great a hitter Alex Rodriguez is. He has been phenomenal for you this season. I mean, at that last at bat, I think, was a great example. He has a couple of bad swings, and all of a sudden, uh, Clement makes a great pitch, and it's a base hit up the middle. He's got such great. Uh, reach and yet when he hits the ball it stays hit I mean it's, it's remarkable how that first ball he hit a line drive and I think 85 percent of the guys who hit that ball maybe it goes right at the center fielder or goes in front of him and he's he's been uh, remarkable for us I he just seems more comfortable in this uniform this year and finally how comfortable is he this year over at third Has he struggled a little bit he has he was he, he was a little bit better last year I, I think uh, Louis Soho has been working with him on his footwork the whole difference uh, at, at third and short, you know, short, you have a little more time. Third, you need a little more reaction on the top half of your body, and he just seems to be struggling with it. Joe, thanks. Okay, Joe. Holrood grounded out to start the inning. Miller single. Bellhorn, a broken bat, flare base hit to left. And here's Johnny Damon with a wind whipping around here at Yankee Stadium. Ball one down and away. I've never heard that expression, Joe. Uh, when a guy hits the ball, it stays hit. That's an interesting way of talking about carry strength and certainly Alex Rodriguez has that. Here's a one out at Damon who's been a tough out today. He's two for three with an RBI a run score. He started the day the second pitch of the afternoon banging a double off the wall in center field. Red Sox got one in the first two in the second two more in the fourth. Hard hit base hit through the right side. Miller will have to hold at third and the bases are loaded for Renteria three straight singles. The Red Sox are busting loose with the bats. Miller being held at third because he had to hold up not knowing whether the ball was going to be caught or not. Right there. That's why he couldn't score. You could see him talking to Dale Slam saying I lost it. I yeah. couldn't see it. So with Renteria coming up. Bases loaded one out. And we're going to have a pitching change here in the fifth inning. So Stanton got out of the fourth. He will exit. And a big jam for the Yankees as Quantrill takes over. So in conclusion, we chose the high road and we shifted our paradigm. 
We bolstered sales to an all-time high increase and leveraged our core equities. That's what I call strategic solutions. Thank you. Watching athletes do their job is just more fun. Drink Pepsi and play the GoPro sweepstakes. You could win a chance to see the World Series, Daytona 500, and more. Drink Pepsi, GoPro. When we got married, suddenly we had two of everything. They had a lot of stuff. Two dining sets, two dogs. Two car insurance companies. I'm State Farm agent Joan Raysom, and this is a true story. We had to get rid of a few things. Yeah, mainly my things. He had State Farm. She had a gecko. I helped them compare rates and coverage. It was no comparison. He was right. For once. This time, one of my things stayed. Last year, 1.3 million drivers switched to State Farm. Call an agent today, and you'll switch, too. Like a good neighbor? State Farm is there. Hey, Johnny. What's up? We're picking up some stuff for the Baseball Hall of Fame exhibit. You got anything you want to contribute? What do you got so far? Uh, some infield dirt, bloody sock and shilling, you know, stuff like that. How about this? Whoa. Wore that one in game four. Yeah, this would be great. Thanks. Yeah, no problem. DHL, delivering America's pastime on time. Hello. Hi there. I hear AOL is helping protect me against identity theft. Yeah, we give you spyware protection, which helps to automatically disable many programs from stealing personal information. Well, I just wanted to say thanks, so I baked you my famous apple crumb cake. Oh, thank you. But it, it wasn't just me. Uh, a lot of us work on that. Wow. I smell cake. Want a better internet? You belong at America Online. Empire State Building and our aerial coverage for today's game, courtesy of the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company and its fleet of airships, reminding you to travel with peace of mind on Goodyear's new Assurance Tires. Getting a little darker, a little rain. The guys on bases as they are jammed for the guy on the right, Paul Quantrill, as Damon at first, Bellhorn at second, Miller at third. And here is Renteria, who's had a good day at the plate. He's dropped down a bunt for a sacrifice. He's two for two with an RBI and a run scored. Already five to nothing, the Red Sox on top. In the air to right field, well hit. Sheffield back at the wall. Grand slam, Renteria. What a day for Edgar Renteria here at Yankee Stadium. And it's nine to nothing Boston here in the fifth. just jumped off his bat into right and got out easily over the head of Gary Sheffield. A lot has been said about the friendly confines of Wrigley Field in Chicago. A lot should be said about the friendly confines here in Yankee Stadium. That short porch in right field has served a lot of hitters well over the years and it does once again in Edgar Renteria. So Quantrill comes in and gives up the grand slam to Renteria. Stanton goes two thirds of an inning three runs on three hits because of this. Fourth career grand slam for Edgar Renteria and that opens this thing up nine to nothing. In the fifth inning and David Ortiz takes low ball two two and one. A nine run lead for the five and oh Matt Clement. Low, three and one. I think it's interesting, Joe, when you talk about the two ballparks, two home parks of these two franchises. You think of the Green Monster as a very friendly place in which to hit home runs, over which to hit home runs. I think the Yankees have done a very good job in making it out that their left-handed hitters over the years are are so powerful and such bombers. 
I mean, before the 314 down the line, it was 296 to that corner. And yet, you would think that the monster is more friendly than right field here at Yankee Stadium, and it's not. Ortiz takes a one out walk. That'll bring in Manny Ramirez, who He's taken a few shots at the monster at Fenway Park. So 314 down the right field line here at Yankee Stadium. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, certainly by no means to, uh, to denigrate uh, the great hitters that have played here. But on the other hand, they have had a short, it's a band box in right field. Yankee Stadium is a band box. And the Yankees have done, as I said, a good job in ignoring that. I mean, when you think about the Yankee lore, they make it out to be, oh no, it's a fair park down the right field line. It's never been fair. But if you go, I don't know, 30, 40 feet away from that line, it just gets deeper and deeper. And then after well, that's that, true. that's true. Then you've got a ballpark that's more than fair for pitchers coming in here with 408 to center field. 399 in the power alley in left center field. And he used to be even tougher for right handed batters. But that curl around the corner, right in that area, right in there, that has been very friendly to left handed pull hitters. 2 and 2 now on Manny Ramirez. And before uh, Yankee Stadium was reconfigured, uh, that fence over which they had to hit the ball was about five feet high. Place is packed with about 55,000 people. And the Red Sox and their fans are the ones having fun up nine to nothing. Here's an 0-2 ball one. So this has been a struggle today. Pavano three and two thirds innings. Stanton two thirds of an inning. Now Quantrill, and he's still looking to pick up his first doubt. He's allowed a grand slam and a walk. Two and two. Saw that note since May 7th. The first 17 games. Opponents hitting 243. The last two against the Red Sox. Boston hitting 413 against Yankee pitching last night and tonight. 11 hits last night. 15 today, so 26 hits. Two two. Uh, foul ball. It's always been fun uh, for Yankee and Red Sox fans to talk about what if Babe Ruth had played for the Red Sox? Well, he did play for the Red Sox, but mostly as a pitcher. And what had he? What if he played for the Red Sox as right fielder? Or what if Ted Williams had played in Yankee Stadium? Or what if Joe DiMaggio had played for the Red Sox with the Green Monster? Sticks the bat out trying to dump one into right. That's going to fall in front of Sheffield. Two on one out. Trying to force Ortiz at second who had to hold up. He's safe. And the eighth man to bat in the inning will be Trot Nixon with two on one out. I think that ball had more hang time than Gary Sheffield thought. It's off the end of the bat. Right fielder. Trot Nixon. And Ortiz. He had to really bust it going into second base and get a base hit for his buddy. His fourth single of the afternoon for Ramirez. Nixon now in the air to center field. Pretty well hit. Matsui back at the wall. It's gone. Three run home run, 12 to nothing. With the wind blowing out. Nixon got it up and out. And it's a dozen to nothing for the Red Sox here in the fifth. The Red Sox are doing to the Yankees what the Yankees did to the Red Sox in game three of the ALCS. 17 hits and we're not even through the fifth inning yet. Kept carrying, carrying, gone. 
With one out, Veritek. In a nine to nothing game at the time, it's maybe not that big of a deal, but Matsui kind of jammed himself right into the wall trying to go back and time it. That's a long run out there, 408 feet away. Instead of getting up and the glove over the wall, which he's able to do, he banged into the wall, and that ball went about 409 feet. The wind's playing with that one, but A-Rod is over to get it. And the ninth man to bat in the inning, Veritek, makes the second out. While we wait for Allroad to step in, let's check in with Jeannie Zelasko. Well, the offense in Atlanta might seem mild compared to what you're witnessing, but top four, Pat Burrell, this single would score two runs as 12th ribby in the last seven games. Phillies have a 7-3 lead as we head to that point. And then bottom five, Andrew Jones grounding into the double play with Chipper would score from third, 7-5. All right, Jeannie, it's a seven-run fifth inning here. How many, I mean, a week ago, you started hearing the name Billy Wagner. This trade bait, Pat Burrell. That stuff starts getting circulated. The Phillies could be four games out at the end of the day in the NL East. <laughs> and that is, that's a team that's got a, you know, decent-sized payroll. They've got mm -hmm. the new ballpark. Which flies it into center. There's no way they're going to give up at the end of May. The four games out, five games out, whatever. The inning is finally over. Quantrill comes in, gives up a grand slam and a three run homer. A seven run fifth. Renteria slams it to right. Nixon hit one to center. 12 0. Red Sox on top. Halfway through. The new Digital Rebel XT. An 8 megapixel, easy to use SLR. With virtually no delay when you snap the picture, and with the ability to shoot at three frames per second, you'll never miss the opportunity to catch the impossible. The next generation Digital Rebel XT, official camera of the NFL and future NFL players everywhere. your children are safe in the car, safe on their bikes, and safe at night. But what about their financial futures? The strength of the AIG companies means we'll be there for you. Insurance, loans, retirement. AIG. to coast, cops are cracking down on safety belt violations. It doesn't matter who you are or where you live, they'll be on the lookout. Cops write tickets to save lives. If you don't buckle up, expect a ticket. Click it or ticket. Ray Sanchez is going to come off the bench and bat. That means Derek Jeter's finished for the rest of the day, and they'd probably like to get that body of Derek Jeter a little rest with a score 12 to nothing. Sanchez takes over. Jeter has had a long week. If you want to start with last Saturday getting hit on the elbow, that diving catch in shallow center field during the week against Detroit. He got hit today in the back, his last time up in the third. So Joe Torre, a longtime big league player himself, knows what. A few extra hours of rest can mean and these two teams don't get together again until tomorrow night. Sanchez still ahead in the count, two and one, as he went after a 2 0 pitch. Joe Torre probably telling Jeter, Derek, go put your body in ice. Off the end of the bat, Clement. Deuces it over to first, one out. 
Back in the third inning, Derek Jeter got hit by Clement. And when Carl Pavano was coming out, Derek Jeter was, I would assume, not grimacing because of the pitching of Pavano, but because I'm sure his body's just yep. beat up right now. Yep. So one out, nobody on, and Tony Womack. Takes the ball. How many English professors just said play by play guy stinks? Body's beat up. It's just wore out. A 1 0. One ball, one strike. Not only is Womack up now, but Ruben Sierra is on deck. There's another guy, Sheffield, whose hand is wore out. <laughs> One ball, one strike on Womack, who's 0 for 2 with a stolen base. Hard hit, base hit through the right side. Hanging, breaking ball, one on, one out. Moments ago, we had a chance to chat with Terry Francona. Terry Francona, you're up 12 0. Uh, this is just a coast day. I know you're just totally comfortable in that dugout that you'll just roll right through to victory, right? Well, I appreciate you saying that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know what? I, I mean, I'd certainly rather be up 12 nothing, but I'd also rather be the ninth inning. And you've got your guy, uh, Matt Clement. You can't say enough for what he's brought to your team this year. Well, I'd like to try. You know what? He's been he's been tremendous. And again, we got a lot of baseball yet to play today. There's all those cliches. I'm going to start using them. But he, he has been really, really good for us. But you remember last year, Terry, when we talked to you in a similar game when you were way up, you said this is bad for ratings. <laughs> yeah, but we, I think we were losing. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, you were. You know what the hell is your ratings wore up that's okay <laughs> thanks Terry okay guys up 12 to nothing in the bottom of the fifth one on one out Sierra batting for Sheffield who was 0 for 1 with a walk and a strikeout that misses 2 and 0 numbers for Sierra who had a tear in his right bicep and had a rib or a hip Injury he was dealing with during his rehab assignment came back last weekend in the series at Shea. And here he slugs it straight up. And somebody's going to have fun with that. It's Manny Ramirez who bails out Edgar Renteria, who is spinning like a top out in left center field. There is a ton of wind. And Renteria is happy that that ball stayed up long enough for Manny Ramirez to get there. Help! Says Edgar. <laughs> Look at that look. Please. All right, Manny. <laughs> With two down. Here's Bernie Williams batting for Matsui. Williams has been taking some action out in left field. As they've moved Matsui to center, they're playing Womack and left, and Bernie Williams. The Yankees really have two guys they don't want to play defensively. Bernie Williams is one of them. Giambi is the other. And Bernie Williams, I know it's been said plenty of times up here, and you can certainly say, well, that's the way it should be anyway. But he is such a classy guy and has handled his final year here with the Yankees so well as he grounds one up the middle for a two out hit. Womack will go to third. They're obviously phasing Williams out. Very proud athlete, a guy who's been right front and center of the Yankees' success since Joe Torre got here in 96. And yet, as he found himself on the bench and out of the lineup and filling in and now batting in the 12 0 game, he used to be the guy they'd take out. To give rest. Right. He has done it all with a smile on his face, and he means it when he says he's just trying to help the team. Granted, it should be like that, but tickets should cost five bucks and we should all get along, but that's not the way it is. First and third, two out. Ball one from Clement. There are a lot of things in baseball that are questionable, but Bernie Williams' dignity is not. 
all time franchise ranks. This is with the Yankees. This isn't with the Marlins or the Rockies teams that just popped up. Top 10 in all those categories games, runs, doubles, home runs, hits, RBIs. 2 0 now on. Alex Rodriguez this guy's so hot you don't want to get him out of the lineup thing about Bernie Williams too he's still lethal with the bat he's always been off to poor starts and I think uh, the Yankees should and Joe Torrey should think harder about starting Bernie Williams in left field and using him more as a designated hitter I'll tell you this because the hot months are his months if he ever found himself out there on the street looking for a job. There'd be teams lined up to That's sign right. Bernie Williams for his experience and his big game capabilities. Yep. Here's a 3 0 pitch to Rodriguez from Clement. That loads him up with two out. So they still, the Red Sox, have yet to retire Alex Rodriguez in this series. Clement just walked his fourth, and here's Tino Martinez. Martinez 0 for 1 with a walk. What a month of May. 10 home runs. And overall 12. Tied for fourth in the American League. Walmack at third. Bunny Williams at second. Alex Rodriguez at first. Two out. Breaking ball in for a strike from Clement. He has specialized with the bases loaded. One and one. That's uh, 11 grand slams during the season. Biggest hit of Tino Martinez's career. 1998 opening game, the grand slam in the seventh inning off Mark Langston after Langston just missed with a 2 2 pitch. Bat strike two. Cubs have already wrapped up their win over Colorado. We're only in the fifth. Billy's up on Atlanta seven to five in the bottom of the seventh at Turner Field. Here's a one two to Tino Martinez two and two. Seven years now these two teams have finished one two in the American League East. And right now both the Red Sox and Yankees are looking up at the Baltimore Orioles. We lost last night to Detroit. That's not close full count. in the order of the standings with the Yankees in second behind the Orioles then Toronto and then the Red Sox they have a devil rays flag here don't they they do yes okay let's check I think bases loaded two out three balls two strikes the runners will go to the right side Olrood makes the play. Clement takes it. And Clement again out of trouble. The Yankees have left nine. Sixth inning, 12 to nothing. The Red Sox lead it.
Memorial Day. Get into your GMC dealer for the final days of the Red Letter event. It's your last chance to get 1,000 hot button bonus cash on almost every 2005 GMC. And your last chance to push the hot button at your GMC dealer. You could win a new GM vehicle. Qualified lessees lease an 05 Yukon two wheel drive SLE for around $399 a month. Call for residency restrictions and lease details. See your local GMC dealers before the Red Letter event ends May 31st. Hey, fellas, you gotta act right now. Click here and you're a winner. Click here and you're a Spammer, huh? Yeah. This exclusive offer is just for you. You know, we helped reduce the amount of spam our members reported by 75% last year. Oh. Wow, thanks for blocking them. Yeah, well, they're not just annoying. They can cause computer viruses or even identity theft. Well, hey, you two. You have been pre-selected to be an instant winner. Oh, never mind. Want a better internet? You belong at America Online. A search engine that delivers unbiased health information so people can make informed decisions. A physician finder that enables them to locate the right doctor for the problem. Just some of the features that make WebMD America's most trusted and most visited health site. A site that's recommended by more physicians and relied on by more than 20 million Americans every month. WebMD, America's health site. Fox Tuesday. As soon as they pull that plug, he'll die. House must decide between the patient's last wish. You can't do this. And saving his life. I'm gonna miss you. He doesn't have to die. House at 9, 8 Central, Fox Tuesday. Viewer discretion advised. 12 to nothing, sixth inning now, and the right-hander Quantrill pitches high to Bill Miller. Bernie Williams stays in the game. He's now in center. Ruben Sierra gets a chance in right field. Miller starts the inning with a base hit. That's 18 hits for the Red Sox. And Miller's two out of four. Russ Johnson is now at third base. And Ray Sanchez is in the game at short. Here's Mark Bellhorn against Quantrill, who isn't fooling anybody. Kevin Euclid will go in and run for Billy Miller. Starting to wonder if we're in Tampa. Watching a game the second week of March. As we're going to see them all off the bench <laughs> for each side. The strike is in to Bellhorn. They could have played this game uh, in the morning and, and just played a B game. It's what they do in spring training, either split squads or B games in different uh, complexes. <laughs> Arizona, the same thing. But this does resemble one of those B games. Biggest cheer of the day for the Yankee fans here was to welcome. Adam Sandler and Chris Rock to the mound for the ceremonial first pitch. It's been downhill from that moment on. The Red Sox scored in the first, second, fourth, fifth. They scored seven times as Bellhorn evens the count two and two. In case you're wondering, in their long great history, the Yankees' worst loss to the Red Sox at Yankee Stadium came back in 1933. Strikes out looking. One out in the sixth. That was about a month after the first All Star game was played in Chicago. And we will have the All Star game second Tuesday in July. July 12th in Detroit this year. Always a lot of fun. And remember, it counts. And if you had forgotten, you will be reminded of that <laughs> leading into. The All-Star game. 1 0 pitch. And one ball, one strike. Uh, I mean, it was important for from a Red Sox standpoint last year. The Red Sox, because the American League won the All-Star game, call it coincidence, call it anything you want. But it was important for the Red Sox to open at Fenway Park against the St. Louis Cardinals last year. 
Bernie Williams takes care of that. Damon is retired for the second time today. Boys and Girls Clubs of America is the official charity of Major League Baseball. Together they create a positive place for kids. Tony La Russa will be managing the National League side. Took him a few weeks after the end of the World Series to remember that he had those duties this year for the National League and his team is headed for it seems a certain date with the postseason the way they're playing. Ramon Vasquez is going to come off the bench and bat for Renteria who will rest after a big day a sacrifice bunt an RBI single a single run scored in a grand slam. Only the Chicago White Sox have a better record than the St. Louis Cardinals. The White Sox have just been phenomenal and yet the Minnesota Twins are only four games behind Chicago. Which is why if you're in the American League East these teams are all pretty good with Baltimore and the Yankees and the Red Sox and Toronto and they're all going to play each other more than they play the other teams and they're going to beat each other up. You may have to win the division this year in the AL East to get into the postseason. The wild card may come out of the central. Bottom of the sixth inning. Yankees bat down 12. Behind this grill lies the newest addition to the Denali line from GMC. Introducing the Envoy Denali with a five-star side impact safety rating and the most standard horsepower of any midsize SUV. The new Envoy Denali and Envoy XL Denali by GMC. Nice car. I should see my other one. No mech survival suit for advanced infantry. Gas-powered magnetic grapple gun. What is that? Back up. Batman begins. Guy dresses up like a bat. Clearly has issues. Ready to beat you 13 in theaters and IMAX June 15. <laughs> could cook, he'd be Gordon Ramsay. Come here, you button it. Now, England's top chef will put these amateur cooks through hell. Burgers! And to win this competition, they'll be skewered. You expect me to serve that? Battered oh. and burned. I'm not a quitter. You're not a cook either. Hell's Kitchen premieres at 9, 8 Central, Memorial Day on Fox. Fox Saturday Baseball brought to you by GMC Trucks and SUVs. We are professional grade by Batman Begins in theaters Wednesday, June 15th. By Subway, experience the great taste of a fresh toasted sub today. Subway, eat fresh. And by Bank of America, higher standards. We move into the bottom of the sixth inning. Yankees bat. Jason Giambi at the plate. Strike one. Gabe Payton is now in left field. Manny Ramirez will end his day four for four with an RBI and a run scored. Euclid stays in the game. He's at third. Vasquez is at short. Although you couldn't tell it by the way they're standing out there right now. <laughs> Euclid is really at short and Vasquez is at second with Bellhorn playing shallow right as they have the shift on for Giambi. In the air to center on a line and Jason Giambi has his first hit. He's on base for the second time today. The one on and nobody out. Our WebMD health update focuses on Red Sox starter Kurt Schilling. Check out your own symptoms at WebMD.com. 
It's that right ankle that they're trying to stabilize. They say that it's unrelated to that sheath around the tendon that was the problem for Schilling in the postseason last year. But talking to Terry Francona and others with the Red Sox, they say, how could it be totally unrelated? They're just trying to stabilize that right ankle. They're talking about him trying a different pair of shoes. It gives him a better base from which to push off that right ankle when he comes back. And the question is when? Will it be before the All-Star break? After it? We seem to talk a lot about Kurt Schilling and shoes. Stephen Kojikaro talks less about shoes than Kurt Schilling. Strike two on a breaking ball down who, and away. Who is that? He writes for People, and he used to be the fashion correspondent for the Today Show. I don't know <laughs> if he's still there or not. He doesn't write anymore. <laughs> one on, nobody out. One ball, two strikes. Flaherty fouls it down the right side. It's headed for the seats, and it makes it. Still one and two. I am, uh, as our audience can tell from our comments, uh, about 28 years older than you, and you may remember the ads. In the old, I'm Buster Brown. I live in a shoe. <laughs> I remember that. That's my dog, Tide. He lives in here, too. Do you? Yeah. Think of Kurt Schilling, you think of Buster Brown. That is. You think of Buster Brown? <laughs> I think of Stephen Kojikar. <laughs> it's the difference in our 30 years. Here's a 1 2 pitch. <laughs> Another strikeout for Clement. That's seven on the day. And the first out here in the sixth inning. Still that good slider from Matt Clement cruising to a lopsided shutout victory so far. Had a chance to, uh, to ask Terry Francona something that you know we haven't asked him first time we've seen him this year but if he had to do it all over again would he have started Schilling in game six last year knowing that he would miss him for the first full half of the season the answer was absolutely and I think that's the, the answer that most Red Sox fans would give you I guarantee you when you hear stories about what people did. Mm -hmm. Boston Red Sox fans longtime suffering frustrated Boston Red Sox fans after they wrapped it up against St. Louis. They wouldn't trade that in for anything. No. Jammed and breaking as bad as Cano. Bellhorn takes the out at first two down. And back to the top of the order for Ray Sanchez. Ray Sanchez. So you know we talked about the American League Central Division and how good it is. Those top two teams of the White Sox and Minnesota. No AL Central team has ever won the wild card. It's usually been Boston or New York and the one exception along the way that I can think of off the top of my head. But the Angels a wild card team. Yes, 2002. When they beat the Giants. Yes, right. 28 and 19 for Minnesota in second place. And right now, that would be silly to talk about at the end of May, but that's the second best record, or the best record, I should say, among any second place team in the American League. First pitch of ball to Sanchez, runner at second, two out. Ball two. Joe, something I just thought about had Kurt Schilling been wearing the socks that Matt Clement is wearing this afternoon, we never would have known that there were blood on his sock. No. In game six of the ALCS last year. Think of the drama that would have taken out of the whole thing. <laughs> two and one. That Cub win five to one over Colorado. Here's a two one. Three and one. 
So with the seven strikeouts, Clement has walked four, and outside of that, he's allowed only five hits and no runs to this point. And, and if you're Terry Francona, you you have to be at least starting to think about getting Clement out of this game. He's their best pitcher over the first two months of the season. And even though the bullpen uh, has performed poorly thus far, you do have a 12 run lead. 103rd pitch of the day from Clement on three and one. And Sanchez has a full count. Worst shutout loss to the Red Sox. 13 to nothing in 1941. The other one was at Yankee Stadium, which is what you're thinking about right Right. Now. Right. Gotcha. Here's a 3 2 pitch. The numbers for Clement. The end, it should be 88 ounces. 88 ounces of gold hanging around his neck and those necklaces that players are wearing which is along those magnetic bracelet lines it's supposed to help heal the body. Yeah. That are vogue now in baseball. 3 2 pitch to the right side for Bellhorn. Lays it with a backhand and off we go to the seventh. Five hit shutout so far for Clement. Still 12 nothing back after this from your local Fox station. Live from Charlotte, top drivers brave the circuit's most grueling race. Tomorrow, the Coca-Cola 600 on Fox. It's go time at Toyota's nationwide sales drive with phenomenal selection at every turn. Like Tundra 4x4 Double Cab. You could lease one for just $249 a month for 36 months with only $19.99 due at signing. Or get $12.50 cash back. Or choose 4Runner and get $1,000 cash back. Or get your best sales drive deal on a Toyota Tacoma. Toyota's nationwide sales drive ends May 31st. See your New England Toyota dealer now. Toyota Savings. That's moving you forward. Where can you really find the balance between what you need and what you want? Try Hudson College. You can have a million dollars or you can be the next president of the United States. Million dollars. <laughs> Jaina. It's challenging. It's personal. It's a place for you to fit in. Hudson College has a highly regarded faculty in healthcare, education, business, and science and humanities. Check us out online at HudsonNow.com. Find your balance at Hudson. Your work demands big tractor power and a compact size. Massey Ferguson 1500 Series compact tractors have a do-it-all attitude that's perfect for you. With their productive power, versatile performance, exceptional comfort, Massey Ferguson 1500 Series compact tractors take on an endless variety of jobs and stylish good looks that not only turn heads, but deliver outstanding visibility, ease of operation, and a smooth, quiet ride. Available at Liberty Equipment, Route 2 in Herman, 848-2552. Hi, this is Jeff Reynolds from RecTech, inviting you to come in and spruce up your RV for the season at our Holden location, located on Route 1A on the Bahava Road. You may also call us ahead at 989-3324. It's camping time, be looking for the RecTech billboard sign, having fun this summertime, get up, get out, and away. You're watching WFVX Fox 22 Bangor. David Ortiz leads off for the Red Sox and hits a laser out into right. Ortiz is on for the third consecutive time. It's time for our Pepsi Go Pro fan cam. Fans are encouraged to go pro with Pepsi this summer. Look at game codes on specially marked Pepsi packaging and collect Go Pro points. Redeemable for sports gear. Log on to PepsiGoPro.com to find out how you can enter to win a Pepsi Ultimate Sports Pass prize package. Peyton gets into one to center field. Well hit. Back at the wall. It is another home run. And you won't see many balls hit farther than that. Peyton hits one off the hitter's background in center field. 
just crushed and that's the third home run allowed by Quantrill. It's 14 to nothing Boston. And this number four spot in the lineup for the Red Sox is five for five. Quantrill is being asked to eat some innings. I was thinking the same thing. He is getting pounded here at Yankee Stadium by the Red Sox. And it's hugs and high fives and everything else in that Red Sox dugout as Trot Nixon takes a strike. This is the type game for Mike Stanton and Paul Quantrill where to get your ERA down may take until August to do it. Because of the one outing. Change up and Nixon rolls it over to second. Cano makes the play. So the first out of the inning after the single and home run by Peyton and this thing is just crushed. They list guys who hit him up into the bleacher section out in center that's painted black here at Yankee Stadium and that hit off the wall in front of it but it hit it as you trail that wall out more in toward left center field. That ball hit about right there the most famous perhaps in the 1978 World Series when Reggie Jackson hit his third home run. I think it was off of uh, the Dodger right hander Charlie Huff. 77. 77. Right. Sorry. Reggie was here today. I say was guessing that he may beat the traffic as Cano knocks it down and Veritek trots down the first of all the guys that you know Terry Francona would like to get out of this game. Forget Ramirez, forget everybody else. It's the guy that just grounded out. But Barrett? he's he's catching Clement in this yeah. five hit shutout to this point. Now there's action in the bullpen for Boston, and you wonder if when Clement comes out, if Veritek gets the rest of the day off. Doug Mirabelli's on the disabled list. Sean Wooten would be the backup catcher, and if you can't do it in a 14 run game, when can you do it? Kelly shot back. Is the backup catcher for the Red Sox after a strike is in to Olrud. Tell you what, for a guy who was just signed and come up after a short stint in the minor leagues, Olrud has had four good at bats. He's singled twice and he's hit one off the pitcher twice. And in both cases, had the pitcher not been there, it would have been base hits. Next week on Fox Saturday Baseball, we will be in Boston for the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim against the Boston Red Sox of Massachusetts. First pitch is a ball down and away. Euclid is first at bat. But they'd like to find more at bats for Kevin Euclid. Where are they going to come? They're not going to come from third base. That's where Miller plays. If he can figure out second base, which is where he's taking some ground balls, he might get some of the bats from Bellhorn. Flaherty has to come out and make the play. And he does to end the inning. We will stay here during our seventh inning stretch during this Memorial Day weekend. In the inning, two runs on the home run by Peyton. Three hits, one left. Red Sox have scored 14 and left nine. It's a treat every time Ronan Tynan is here and Bob Shepard will introduce him. For attention please. Ladies and gentlemen. Will you please rise. Please direct your attention now to the microphone behind home plate. And welcome DECA Universal Classics recording artist Ronan Tynan. In honor of the service men and women stationed around the globe, Dr. Tynan 
will now sing God Bless America. While the storm clouds gather far across the sea, let us swear allegiance to a land that's free. Let us all be grateful for a land so fair. As we raise our voices in a solemn prayer, God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her. The night with the light from above, from the mountains to the prairies to the oceans, wide with foam. God bless America. to give our relationship another shot. But we need some quality time together. Great. You have to win that trip to the Caribbean, Dave. So don't blow it, honey. It's your only hope. It's your only hope. Okay. It's your only hope. Yeah. It's your only hope. Mm-hmm. It's your only hope. Play Choose Your Destiny at BK. Every game piece can win. Star Wars Episode Three now playing. A search engine that delivers unbiased health information so people can make informed decisions. A physician finder that enables them to locate the right doctor for the problem. Just some of the features that make WebMD America's most trusted and most visited health site. A site that's recommended by more physicians and relied on by more than 20 million Americans every month. WebMD, America's health site. This Memorial Day, get into your GMC dealer for the final days of the Red Letter event. It's your last chance to get 1,000 hot button bonus cash on almost every 2005 GMC. And your last chance to push the hot button at your GMC dealer. You could win a new GM vehicle. Now get up to 5,000 total cash back on select 2005 Sierra 1500 extended cabs in inventory. See your local GMC dealers before the Red Letter event ends May 31st. The new Digital Rebel XT, an 8 megapixel, easy to use SLR. With virtually no delay when you snap the picture and with the ability to shoot at three frames per second, you'll never miss the opportunity to catch the impossible. The next generation Digital Rebel XT, official camera of the NFL and future NFL players everywhere. Fox Saturday Baseball is brought to you by Burger King. Mind you, to have it your way. And by The Longest Yard, starring Adam Sandler, Chris Rock, Burt Reynolds, and Nelly, now playing in theaters everywhere. Our game summary is brought to you by Burger King, and as we play in the bottom of the seventh, everybody had a good stretch. It's 14 to nothing, the Red Sox on top. Clement has finished after his six innings. The Red Sox this series, 32 hits in less than two full games. One through four hitters today, 10 RBIs. And these two managers will hook up in the rubber game of this three game series tomorrow night. Tim 
Cleveland takes over and the major league debut of Kelly Shopak, who was just called up when the team released Sean Woop. Numbers for Timlin. Been around a long time and he still gets a lot of big outs. Part of World Championships with the Toronto Blue Jays. One ball, one strike. Womack, then Sierra, then Bernie Williams. Right side, another hit for Womack. He is two for his last two. Two out of four today. What have we seen today from the Red Sox? Three home runs mixed into those 21 hits and a 14 to nothing lead. Here's Ruben Sierra. With Womack at first, nobody out. Ball one from Timlin. The last time the Red Sox won by 14 runs or more was June 27th of 2003. They beat the Marlins 25 to 8. Carl Pavano was pitching for the Marlins and failed to get an out in that game. And the common denominator, at least the Red Sox is, as they try to make history here at Yankee Stadium. As if Pavano made the start, just didn't have it today. He was on a four game winning streak, part of this Yankee rotation, which has really turned it around. And a big reason why they've won 16 of 18, but Carl could not get through four innings. I remember that game. I think the Red Sox scored something like 14 runs in the first inning. We did the game the next day. Yeah. That's on the outside corner, two and two on Sierra. Well, then six innings, no runs, five hits, four walks, seven strikeouts, and a hit batsman. And they do get Veritek out to let him rest after they took out Clement. Up and away, full count. It is always moving. When you come to Yankee Stadium and hear Ronan Tynan sing God Bless America, that sensational voice of his. And on this Memorial Day weekend, you can't help but think about a lot of things, Joe. My father fought in the South Pacific. Your father fought at the bridge at Remagen. And in talking about what to say, obviously Happy Memorial Day didn't seem to be enough. So that's why we decided to take out the bottom of the seventh inning or going into the bottom of the seventh with that flag of the six flag bearers raising the flag at Iwo Jima arguably uh, the most famous photograph in this country's history. Sierra so grounds out to Olrud. Womack at second one out. I just finished the book uh, by James Bradley called The Flags of Our Fathers and this gentleman right at the base is a name that uh, that comes out at you. His name was Harlan Block. He was misidentified. He's a South Texan. The only person who knew it was her boy was his mom. And the reason was she said, I've changed a thousand diapers and I ought to know his rear end when I see him. <laughs> it's, it's such a moving book and a moving story. And three of the six flag raisers died on Iwo Jima and one uh, if I hadn't mentioned it was James Bradley's father John and a terrific book and certainly worth remembering on this weekend. Bernie Williams at the plate first pitch up and away for ball one. Military personnel in the stadium today and you think about World War Two or you think about What's going on now in Iraq and Afghanistan and you can do nothing but send your best wishes and your thanks to those who fight for our freedom every day and are in harm's way. It's also Fleet Week here in New York. So a lot of sailors in town is with a runner at second one out. It's a one ball one strike count on Bernie Williams. Down and in, two and one from Timlin. On two and one, William 
Williams takes outside three and one. After Bernie Williams it is Russ Johnson who has yet to bat in this game. He took over for Alex Rodriguez. Who's been on base seven times in this series today two for two plus a walk. Tim Lynn just has to throw strikes. Bernie Williams isn't up there to give anything away with his team down 14 to nothing. He's fighting for more at bats and a chance to get in the lineup more for Joe Torre. So he's going to be dialed in on a 3 1 pitch from Tim Lynn. And he lines it into right center field to break up the shutout. In to score is Womack. Williams delivers, and it's 14 to 1. <laughs> Interesting reaction from the remainder of the Yankee Stadium crowd. <laughs> Mom, we finally scored a run. <laughs> I'm calling from the stadium. Makes Bernie, it 14 to 1. Bernie Williams, 2 for 2. Now it's Russ Johnson. Now you can imagine uh, people planning Memorial Day weekend coming out to the stadium, rooting for the Yankees, hoping to have something to cheer about, but it has been all Red Sox this afternoon. They give Derek Jeter second base, no stolen base. Or rather, Bernie Williams. Bernie Williams does not get credit for a stolen base. And Johnson in the air to right center field. Bernie Williams holds at third. Didn't get a read on that ball off the bat. It's a 13 run game so. Not a big deal tighter game that's a ball that Bernie Williams would score on and it's first and third one out for Tino Martinez. So Johnson gets in on the fun today a little clap and that's eight hits for the Yankees and they're going to get going in the Red Sox bullpen here in the seventh. Shallow center field. Bernie Williams will hold at third, and it's first and third, two out. That'll bring in Giambi, another guy who's not given away at bats this time in his career. Up to 231 with his average. He has singled, walked, and bounced into a four set. Mike Myers is getting loose. Yeah. Philadelphia opening it up on Atlanta 12 to 5. Florida will play the Mets tonight. Kaz Ishii against Dontrell Willis, who's 8 and 1 in an ERA of 1.55. It's one thing, Tim, to be 8 and 1 if you're Dontrell Willis, but how about an ERA of 1.5? Remember a couple of years ago when he was the last guy added to the National League All-Star team in Chicago. 0-2 no on Giambi. He is one of the great stories in Major League Baseball with his mom, a single parent, uh, raising him, working on the bridges in San Francisco and in around San Francisco from Oakland. And what a remarkable start he has had. She can't watch and doesn't want to know anything that's going on during the game when no. Dontrell pitches. No. Giambi strikes out and the Yankees get the one run. So the shutout is gone. It's 14 to 1 after 7. It's time now for a DHL game break. Eugenie Zelasco and Kevin Kennedy in the Fox Network Center. Yes, it is the DHL game break brought to you by DHL delivering America's pastime on time. Mark Pryor won't be delivering anything for a while. 
The timetable on his return remains a question mark, but today the Cubs confirmed it's a compression fracture of the right elbow, different from a linear fracture, which could have been career ending, Kevin. Take a look at this, Jeannie. I mean, right off the right elbow, that's Brad Hoff plate, 115 miles off the bat. It was clocked at no reaction time, and Pryor has great mechanics. Almost would have been better if he fall off, falls off the mound like a lot of guys, but uh, nonetheless, he's gone. Therefore, a trade in the works. This was already in the works before this, but a pretty good move for both ball clubs. But Troy Hawkins goes to San Francisco. They need bullpen help. Did not get the job done in Chicago. Williams, a starter last year in San Francisco. He had 10 wins. He was in AAA this year. So he is getting the job done in Chicago. Derek Lee with the Rockets in town just showing off a little bit. Bottom one, that would be his 15th home run of the season. And bottom six. That picture? He's still around. Yeah, yeah. Young, young, young Kim. Yeah, okay. Yes, hmm. he's back to starting, but Yankee it's not going well. Him. About okay. as about as well as the closing <laughs> situation. And then we got a little bit of a show going on in Atlanta. Jason Michaels, a little bit. It's deep. his day. A little defense right there. How about capping it right there? The breaking ball. We'll take that out of the ballpark. Let's open this ball game up for Philadelphia. They do. It's 12-5, ninth inning. Philadelphia getting some offense. You know that NL East, by the way, a five-team race. I like all these ball clubs. Everybody's in it, including the Nationals. Yeah, the Washington Nationals. Beating each other up. This has been the DHL Game Break, brought to you by DHL, delivering America's pastime on time. You need a hand with that gear? I got it. <laughs> Are you okay? Yeah. Are you crying? No. There's no crying. There's no crying in shipping. My foreman, Larry Lagan, snapped a hamstring, hauling car batteries up six flights. Did he cry? No. No. And you know why? Because there is no crying in shipping. Now you pick that up, and you get out there, and you ship. DHL, delivering America's pastime on time. Fox Saturday Baseball is brought to you by DHL, delivering America's pastime on time. We thank them for helping to bring you Fox Saturday baseball. We go to the eighth inning, and it is the fourth pitcher of the day for the Yankees, Buddy Groom. Got a big out last night for the Yankees in their 6 3 win. Former Oriole delivers, and Bellhorn fouls it out of play. Six runs allowed by Paul Quantrill in two and two thirds innings. Bellhorn tried to hold up. It's 0 and 2. The rest of the numbers for Quantrill: two and two thirds, six runs, seven hits, one walk, and two strikeouts. Three home runs allowed. Bellhorn waits and now hits it in the air to left. Tony Womack still getting used to left field. Squeezes out number one. Give you our in-game box score for the Boston Red Sox. Brought to you by Metamucil. Johnny Damon a big day. Edgar Renteria who's not in there now. He's been replaced by Vasquez. Renteria had three hits including a grand slam. Hayden in the cleanup spot took over for the guy on the right, Manny Ramirez, who had four singles. Buddy Groom finds strike one on Johnny Damon. So the Red Sox will enjoy a Saturday night in this great city after a big day at Yankee Stadium. 22 hits for Boston today, four of them by their leadoff man, Johnny Damon. Joe, uh, about four innings ago, we were talking about how Johnny Damon jumps at the ball, and this is an example. Rear end out. Not the prettiest picture of how to make contact and float one in there, but he can get it done and has been getting it done for the last decade or so. One on, one out. Vasquez, who struck out in his only at bat so far today, strike one. If you were talking to a young ball player, grade school, high school, college, you would not point to Johnny Damon, and Johnny would tell you that. Don't try to hit like I do. <laughs> he is a guy, though, Johnny Damon, that 
He's fun to watch play because you know he's having a good time. Yeah, that's really true. And it comes across that he is. Off the end of the bat, Vasquez is on. 23 hits today for the Red Sox. And David Ortiz will step to the plate. Vasquez, who's on with a hit, is from Puerto Rico. This past week, Chico Carasqual, the first Latin All Star, passed away in Venezuela, and he was really Tim the first in a long line of great shortstops from Venezuela. And uh, the the greatest name among those shortstops, we Aparicio, of course, David Concepcion, Ozzy Guillen, and Chico Carasqual were very very close. Another base hit. That's number 24. They'll hold Damon at third, and the Red Sox have taken, I guess, in some respects, their foot off the gas pedal a little as they hold the runner Damon over at third. Dale Swain isn't going to send him up 13 with now the base is loaded, one out. You see the 24 hits. The record for the Red Sox is 28 hits. They did it in 1950 in 2003 against Florida. Bases loaded one out. Peyton grounds one to third. Johnson out at second. Nope. Not yet. Now he's out. In to score is Damon. Cano was trying to rush it and probably wouldn't have been able to turn two anyway. It'll be an RBI for Peyton, his third RBI today, as Cano could not turn it. Good play by Russ Johnson, the third baseman. And the young second baseman tries to get rid of it before he has it. Sox fans are left and they're getting a let's go Red Sox cheer going here up 15 to 1. There aren't enough Yankee fans here to drown it out with booze. Nixon takes low 2 and 0. Yeah the crowd sounds like we're at Fenway Park instead of Yankee Stadium. Fans are booing, but they're doing it on the FDR. They're doing it on the GW Bridge. <laughs> the Combs Dam Bridge that runs uh, close here at the Yankee Stadium. Love to show you the GW Br Bridge, but the blimp went home. <laughs> two and two on Nixon. 15 to one, first and third, two out. Full count from Buddy Groom. I remember doing a game with your dad uh, some 14 years ago in Los Angeles in the 12th inning. Long game, ton of pitches, ton of runs, and the blimp ran out of Petro and had to go home. End of the sunset. <laughs> oh, do we laugh about that? <laughs> no such report of running low on fuel today. Though. No, just no. Head it out. Maybe they're going to cover. Or Fleetwood. <laughs> or the Coca Cola 600. Tomorrow night, Nixon into center field. That ball's going to get down. 25 hits. And a 16 to 1 lead. Nixon has five RBIs. And here is Kelly Shopak making his major league debut at the plate. The backup catcher with Doug Mirabelli on the disabled list, strike one. It's the type of game, Joe, that you start to wonder why Trot Nixon has that particular type eye black under his eyes. It's not just a straight line, it's done like a horseshoe. 
I guess. I think that's an effort. You know, yeah, I, I do too. I do too. Yeah, that's why. Yeah, yeah, it was that way at the beginning of the game. That hasn't just kind of uh, melted down because of the heat or anything like that. Shot back was just hit by a pitch, by the way. Moments ago, the scoreboard had 813 and all zeros under the runs, hits, and errors. Now they're back at 422 in the afternoon, 15 to 1. Yeah, and the Red Sox are old school with the eye black. Now they've got stickers. Yeah. Most teams have stickers that go under the eyes to cut down the glare, but these guys use the old kind of eye black that can melt and dribble down your cheeks. But I think Trot is trying to look like one of the Fantastic Four. 2 0 is the count. And of all things, here it is less than 24 hours later after Bruce Fremming came very close to having his right arm broken in last night's game, gutting it out here in the eighth inning. Through the right side, Cano can't get to it. One run scores. 16 runs on 25 hits. And again, the Red Sox are going to bat around. And again, it's another hit for John Olroot. He could easily have five hits today. Olroot is sparkling clean. <laughs> Nixon's got stubble. Eye black. Mouthful of junk. Standing over at third, and John looks like he's ready to collect the offering at church. Like he shaved in the sixth inning. The scoreboard has gone absolutely haywire. All these runs, the Yankee Stadium scoreboard can't handle it. <laughs> it's 2 0 the count on Euclid. I literally have to add it up to figure out what the score is. In the air to center off the bat of Euclid. 26 hits so far. We go to the bottom of the eighth inning, and the score is put it up, please. 17 to 1. Going to the bottom of the eighth. Here's something you don't see McDonald's doing doubling their menu. But that's exactly what Subway Restaurants is doing. Now every sub they make, you can get toasted or untoasted. The choice is yours. Two of everything? This is going to be great. Toasted or untoasted. Now that's great. Yeah, that's what I meant. You've always loved the great taste of our low-fat savory turkey sub. Now try it fresh toasted with hot bubbly cheese. Two Jareds? Uh, not so great. Subway. Eat fresh. Mr. Goodwrench changed your brake pads and inspected your rotors? That's right. We wouldn't trust our car to anyone but our GM dealer. Sit. Looking for Mr. Goodwrench. So what's in the truck? That would be tires. Right. Just checking. Find Mr. Goodwrench at all GM dealerships nationwide. Those poor, poor cows. Tires are made of rubber. Those poor rubber cows. Pro quarterback Paul Crew was arrested for breaking the law. Stuff happens. Yes, it does. I mean, look what happened to your ears. <laughs> now, he may not be the star he used to be, but he's just what they need. He broke in my nose. Okay, stop crying. See the comedy Joel Siegel is calling a summer blockbuster. How's it look? Kind of like a young Michael Jackson. I love little Michael. The Longest Yard. Rated PG-13. Now playing only in theaters. The summer's biggest thriller isn't in theaters. It's on Fox. Meet the FBI's violent crimes unit. If the nightmare is real... He wants them to suffer. The case is theirs. The Inside premieres Wednesday, June 8th. Viewer discretion advised. This is kind of exciting. Glad we could entertain you. Fox Saturday Baseball brought to you by Subway. Experience the great taste of fresh toasted sub today. Subway, eat fresh. Buy new M3 Power from Gillette. Feel the power of the world's best shave. By Goodyear Forterra. Tough on the outside, soft on the inside. And by Mr. Goodwrench. You can find Mr. Goodwrench at all GM dealers nationwide. 
New pitcher is the third of the day for the Red Sox. Timlin gives way to Mike Myers. We're in the bottom of the eighth, 17 to 1. And the first pitch to Flaherty is in for strike one. John is 0 for 3. Cano is 0 for 3 on deck. And then Sanchez. Myers was with St. Louis during spring training, signed as a free agent over the offseason. And then after literally two weeks of the spring schedule they just basically gave him to the Red Sox and Boston's glad to have him back strike two on Flaherty he was with Boston last year Myers was has always been a good specialist against left handed hitters because of that delivery hard hit Scooped up by Euclid. Wow. Tomorrow, NASCAR and Fox returns with Nextel Cup racing from Charlotte. The Coca Cola 600. Tomorrow night, defending champion Jimmy Johnson looks to extend his lead in the driver's standings and defend his title against the world's best drivers. NASCAR racing from Charlotte tomorrow at 5 Eastern, 2 Pacific, only on Fox. Better known as NASCAR's Marathon. The Coca Cola 600. Yes. I think of uh, marathons, I, I can't help but think of the Boston Marathon run in late April. I, I doubt, however, that the, the NASCAR Marathon will ever have the likes of Rosie Ruiz. No. Those are. That's into center. Two out. Go ahead, <laughs> for Rosie. Those, for those of you who do not remember Rosie Ruiz, she took a subway on her way to finish. Instead of running the whole route in Boston, she took a subway to the finish line. They That's didn't just find splitting out. Splitting hairs. <laughs> I don't think anybody in the NASCAR marathon will be taking subways en route. Do you think she took her number off when she got on the subway? <laughs> Yes. Like that. <laughs> oh boy, I'm Bush. Where does this get off? <laughs> Up the middle to his left. Vasquez. And the inning comes over. No, I'm serious. I was sitting right next to her on the subway. <laughs> and the next thing you know, she's winning the Boston Marathon. <laughs> Bottom of the eighth, 17 to 1. And now we go to the ninth. Hello. Wait. Did you see that? Go back. Clearly, that woman is trying to get more fiber and calcium in her diet. Now, it's so much easier with new Metamucil capsules plus calcium. Metamucil fiber for regularity, plus as much calcium as an 8-ounce glass of milk for strong bones to help prevent osteoporosis. Metamucil capsules plus calcium. Stay regular, stay strong. feeling you look they smile you win they go home it's the feeling you get every day with the world's best shave m3 power every move is smooth every word is cool i never want to lose that feeling chevy the best-selling full-size suvs Perfect for escorting all kinds of VIPs. Especially your own. The best-selling Chevy Tahoe. Now with standard OnStar, including one-year safe and sound plan and stability track. Now lease an 05 Tahoe LS two-wheel drive for around $339 a month. Residency restrictions apply. Call for lease details. See your local Chevy dealer. AL powers collide in a postseason rematch. Angels 
Red Sox. Fox Saturday Baseball. Next week, check local listings. First pitch down and in to Mark Bellhorn, who is up for the 17th time today. Bounced into a force out score to run. Fly to center. Single to score. Struck out. Fly to left. He's the number nine hitter in this Boston lineup. 16 run lead here in the ninth inning. 2 0 the count on Bellhorn. And into center field. The Red Sox are one hit away from tying their franchise high. I remember your comment earlier Joe quoting Johnny Damon saying that what we have to do is go out and beat on the ball and beat people with our offense. Have they ever done that today. And here is Johnny Damon. He's been right in the middle of all of it. He is four out of six with three singles a double two runs scored and an RBI three runs. scored. What a day he came in third in the league hitting three thirty seven. He's up 10 points with his average. Buddy Groom deals, and that's into left center field. Should be handled by Womack. One on, one out. Our Chevrolet player of the game is Edgar Renteria in recognition of his outstanding play. Chevrolet will make a $1,000 donation to the Boys and Girls Clubs of America, Chevy, and American Revolution. For Edgar Renteria, a bunt, an RBI single. A single run scored and then in his last at bat the grand slam off Quantrill. Fourth career grand slam. A big part of an impressive win today by the Red Sox strike one on Vasquez who took over in the sixth and he's up there for the third time. Kind of have to wonder why Edgar and Manny are still on the bench. And if you Terry Francona you go over and say look guys go get showered going back to the hotel you know giving you the rest for a reason but here they are out on the bench. Oh and two on Vasquez. Usually you hear stories about guys leaving early. Yeah. Yeah. In tight games. Uh huh. Guys right. not being ready to pinch hit. Right. Guys not dressed. Where is he. In the clubhouse. Wearing a sweatshirt. One ball, two strikes. You may remember the name Alex Johnson. Alex won a batting title back in 1970. And he was a guy who got dressed into a civilian clothes quicker than any person. It, you can't, I mean, we used to accuse him of wearing his street clothes. Underneath his uniform. And all they'd have to do is take the uniform off and he'd be in his street clothes and boom. He would be playing a game and actually bump into you as you're going into the clubhouse after the game. He's on his way out dressed. On his way out dressed, gone. See you later. You could celebrate, but you would celebrate without Alex. And he could play too. Here's David Ortiz, who has two hits, two walks, three runs scored. He's up to 34 RBIs. Hit by Ortiz ties the franchise record for hits in a game. 28 is the mark. There are 27. Ortiz either has to get a hit or extend this with Jay Payton on deck. Instead, he pops it up in the left center field. Tony Womack is there. The inning is over. We go to the bottom of the ninth. Yankees will bat their last chance, trailing by 16. Hitting the cutoff man could be the difference between winning and losing the game. Boys and Girls Clubs of America is the official charity of Major League Baseball. Like this. Bingo. We're going to need a few more cutoff men. Together, they create a positive place for kids. Good teamwork. That'll work. Good cutoff. <laughs> Fox has the freaking hottest ticket of the summer. Sweet Family Guy is back with the first of seven in your face, all new episodes. I got a makeover, Dad. Honey, I always thought you were beautiful. <laughs>
Oh, God. Couldn't do that with a straight face. Followed by all new episodes of the hit American Dad. My butt is literally on the line. Well, that must be one massive line because your butt is huge. All new episodes start Sunday, June 5th at 9, 8 central. Part of Animation Domination on Fox. Viewer discretion advised. They said he wouldn't be allowed here. When I say now, it means now. No one would dare to bring him to the States. That looks like a dog's dinner. But one network took the risk, Fox. For as long as I'm alive, I'm never going to serve that. Come here, you. Button it. The star of England's Smash series. What is that? Is about to become TV's most brutal boss. You've got a pallet like a cow's backside. America, can you survive Chef Gordon Ramsay? You haven't got a clue, you know that. I'm not a quitter. You're not a cook either. Hell's Kitchen premieres at 9, Memorial Day on Fox. Live from Charlotte, it's NASCAR's toughest endurance test as Jeff Gordon leads the pack in the circuit's most grueling race. Tomorrow, the Coca-Cola 600 in HD on Fox. If you've got to see it to believe it, move, move. it can only be happening in New Orleans. Stop resisting! A full hour of cops. Then, this patrolman was murdered in cold blood. Police now have new evidence and need your help to find the killer. All new America's Most Wanted. It all starts at 8, 7 Central tonight on Fox. Historic day, 27 hits by the Red Sox. Their franchise record, 28. 16 run lead by the Red Sox. 14 runs is their largest win by the Red Sox against the Yankees. This is the most ever run scored against the Yankees by the Boston Red Sox. And the Yankees and Red Sox will be anxious, especially the Yankees, to get this one over and focus on tomorrow night. As Tony Womack leads off against Keith Folk. And he takes a strike. And Joe, after all of those sensational numbers that you just talked about, 27 hits, 17 runs, what could be bad about the Red Sox afternoon? The fact that Keith Folk has to pitch in a 16-run differential game, trying to get himself straightened out. Popped up on the left side, Euclid the third baseman. Womack is retired, and they are giving Euclid the uke cheer here at Yankee Stadium. That's how many Red Sox fans are here in the seats now as out number one is recorded. There was a lot of controversy about Monday's off day for the Red Sox or semi off day when they were playing in the Hall of Fame game. Folk went down to Birmingham and people speculated he was seeing Dr. James Andrews to check out his shoulder. The Red Sox swear up and down that's not the case. They really haven't been specific on what he went down there for but there's evidently spot and clinic they have down there where you can get in one of those suits I guess that they would use for a video game to get live type action and see how an athlete really reacts where you can try to get your mechanics straightened out and if Terry Francona will tell you one thing it's about the takeout of the baseball from the glove that Folk has which is kind of irregular getting it back in that cocked position and bringing it to the plate. He's been so inconsistent with the beginning part of his delivery to the plate that that's what really set him off where his ERA is ridiculously high. And over 10. Ground ball to the right side. Bellhorn scoops it up. Two out. Yeah, it's the type of takeaway where he doesn't bring the glove back to the right shoulder, but takes the ball out of the glove, and it's partially. Uh, the reason for his success that and the differential between his fastball and his changeup. Terry also telling us that one of the problems that Keith has had is that his fastball hasn't been getting up to 88 89. So his fastball and his changeup uh, have been close together and that doesn't fool too many hitters. It's got to be that disparity between the two. Bernie Williams would like to end the day three for three. He takes a strike. Coordinating producer of Major League Baseball on Fox in today's game is Pete Macheska. The director's John Moore. Associate director Marcy Kempner. Broadcast associate Kevin Dresser. Thanks to Steve Horn up here in the booth as always. Our editorial consultant and our technical producer is Sid Drexler. Along with many here from the Bronx bringing you this long day of baseball. These two teams will have split the first eight games that they've played against one another this season. 
Red Sox will be a half game behind the Yankees at the end of the day with Baltimore on top in the AL East. A one one. Two and one. Saturday afternoon baseball. It all started about 45 years ago when Dizzy Dean and Pee Wee Reese used to go on on Saturday, the Saturday game of the week, and their producer was Gene Kirby. And Gene Kirby turns 90 years old today down in St. Petersburg, Florida. Three balls and a strike. He more or less started the tradition, and we're happy to be carrying it on. You say that as if you know that he'll be watching down in St. Pete. I certainly hope so. With two out and nobody on, here comes a 3 1. Williams couldn't hold up, full count. And this day could be down to its last pitch. And the Red Sox fans make noise. center the Boston Red Sox win this game 17 to 1 and these two clubs have split the first two games of this set for more information on today's game and for the latest information on Major League Baseball go to FoxSports.com powered by MSM there's our final score today don't miss NASCAR on Fox tomorrow from Charlotte with a Coca-Cola 600 starting at 5 Eastern 2 Pacific Next week on Fox Saturday Baseball, the Angels are in Boston to take on the Red Sox. Or the Giants take on the Mets here in New York, plus other regional action. Check your local listings. For Tim McCarver, I'm Joe Buck. So long from New York. You've been watching Fox Sports, your home for the 2005 Major League Baseball All-Star Game. A lot of hits, a lot of runs. 18 total, and the Red Sox had 17 of them. Great start by Clement, who's now 6-0. Clement and the Red Sox beat Pavano and the Yankees. From all of us here in the Bronx, so long from New York. Red Sox win it 17 to 1. Until next Saturday, my friends, from Fenway. This has been a presentation of Fox Sports, home to Major League Baseball, the National Football League and NASCAR. Three, two, one. See ya. Is this what comes to mind when you think of buying a new car or truck? It's time to change your frame of mind. You can find me Farney Newport Ford puts you into a Ford frame of mind every time. Best people, best selection, best price, the best deals in Maine. Varney Newport Ford, just one mile from the Triangle Moosehead Trail, Newport. Nice Harley. Thanks. Yeah, I was going to get one of those myself, but I uh, spent the 6495 on a killer dinette set. It was tough, you know. It was Harley, dinette set, Harley, dinette set. The 2005 Sportster is here. Went with a dinette set. The bike you've always wanted starts at 6495 At Central Maine, Harley Davidson and Buell. These six-piece dining room sets are just $399. You get the table with four chairs and the bench, all for just $399. Solid hardwood and your choice of natural or oak you get all six pieces for just $3.99. Plus, no money down, no interest, and no payment financing, and free local delivery. America's mattress and furniture gallery, where America feels right at home. Proud to be a mean-owned company. It's that time of year again. I just returned from North Carolina Furniture Market, where I purchased several truckloads of quality name-brand furniture. Names like Berkline, Benchcraft, England, and Sealy Posturepedic. But we do need to make room for all our new merchandise. So come on into Tuffy's now and save some serious money on living room, dining room, and bedroom groups. No reasonable offers refused. Shop during our extended summer hours and be sure to check out our new website. Enjoy truckloads of savings all this month only at Tuffy's Discount Furniture, Pushaw Road, Glenburn. Morrison Chevrolet in Ellsworth, where the lowest price is law. Here at Morrison Chevrolet, we treat our customers like family. 
We know their names, we know their needs, and we're here to take care of them. We're a large dealership, but we're a family dealership. So we have a personal relationship with each and every one of our customers. It's just like family. When you buy a car from us, it's a family-run business. There is no pressure at Morrison Chevrolet. Morrison Chevrolet in Ellsworth. Large enough to get you the best deal, small enough to care. You're watching WFVX, Fox 22, Bangor. Get ready to experience a revolutionary new concept in fitness that will get your mind awakened, your booty shaken, and it will take your spirit to new heights. I lost 20 and a half pounds and a fantastic 24 inches. I lost 10 pounds and over 15 inches, and it's wonderful. I see such a difference in my clothes. It's an amazing discovery that after 10 weeks, you can get rid of your rolls and your flab and have fun while you're doing it. What's all the rave? It's Yoga Booty Ballet, the new in-home fitness system that will completely transform your body in just 10 weeks, guaranteed. It just sculpted my butt. You got my booty. lower butt. I've got mm -hmm. booty, girl. I've got that. <laughs> so what is Yoga Booty Ballet? It's the perfect combination of new school yoga, simple dance, and booty sculpting fitness. Raving about this new fitness phenomenon, Entertainment Weekly declares Hollywood's body elite line up for Yoga Booty Ballet. In Touch Weekly writes, the stars are getting their groove on and their unwanted pounds off. Major Hollywood celebrities use Yoga Booty Ballet because it keeps them lean, sexy, and always ready for the camera. Like television actress and star of General Hospital, Christina Wagner. Television actress, Tori Spelling. And from NYPD Blue and Desperate Housewives, here's Sharon Lawrence. I know it works, and I know I'm going to have a great time doing it. You get your groove on, and you can't, you know, ask for more than that. Not only Hollywood's elite, but women everywhere have experienced the body-shaping and life-changing benefits of Yoga Booty Ballet. Come join the feel-good fitness revolution and start your total body transformation in just 10 weeks, guaranteed. You have the dancing and the fun and you're shaking your butt. They get to dance and let go of their inhibitions and just... really amazed to see the difference. I lost 18 and a half pounds and 25 inches all over my body. Wow. I ended up losing 15 pounds uh, and 14 inches. She put on a tank top the other day and I almost passed out. Girl, good. I did yoga booty ballet and I lost 13 inches. I had great results. I actually released 20 and a half pounds and over 18 inches. That's just scratching the surface. So, does Yoga Booty Ballet work? The inspirational force behind Yoga Booty Ballet is its creators, T. Madonna and Gillian Marla, two of the hottest trend-setting fitness experts in the country. From Hollywood, California to Miami South Beach, these fitness superstars are spreading their message of empowerment and inspiration. For instance, college, T and Gillian merged their extensive backgrounds in fitness, yoga, and dance to create Yoga Booty Ballet. Gillian and T have just the most incredible energy. They love what they do. They're so good at it, and they're sharing it with everybody. T and I created Yoga Booty Ballet because we were tired of seeing women feel discouraged about the way they look. It's a vicious cycle. You feel bad about your body, so you buy some piece of exercise equipment or join a gym, but instead of feeling better about yourself, you end up even more critical. See, when you start from a place of positivity, you learn to love and accept yourself while you're working to better yourself. When that happens, every single day, you make more and more positive choices, and with that, there's no limit to what you can achieve. With Yoga Booty Ballet, getting in shape has never been easier. You simply pop in a workout, and in less than an hour, you'll experience the fun-filled benefits and body-shaping results only Yoga Booty Ballet can deliver. 
Now T and Gillian will describe some of their proven techniques and signature moves that will have you looking forward to your next yoga booty ballet workout. We've taken the mystery out of yoga and made it fun, accessible, and easy. Valerie's gonna help us out with a little demo. She's gonna show us upward facing dog. This is the best exercise we know to strengthen the upper back, the lower back, while working the triceps at the same time. Now she's gonna take it to downward facing dog. This really lengthens and strengthens the legs, opens up the hips, stretches the low back, and also tones the arms. Go ahead and jump forward to beetle squat. Here's another YBB signature move. It's great for the low back. This is a safe low back strengthener. It's amazing toning for the hamstrings and of course the booty. Now she's gonna bring it down to blooming flower. Another signature move. This is a beautiful and expressive move that elongates the side body, develops core strength, and also just feels good. Sarah's gonna start us off warming up with a zigzag. This is a great move for the abdominals because it works your core, your sides, your waist, and your back, all without having to get on the floor. Then we're gonna move to stir the pot. It's fun, it's funky, and it's really sexy. Show us a bad kitty, Sarah. This is the YBB signature move. It's fun, it's high intensity cardio, yeah. it burns fat, and you have a great time doing it, releasing your inner bad kitty. Now we're gonna move to some ballet sculpting moves. We'll start with the rear leg lift. This really targets the booty. Look at this girl working here. Uh -huh. She's also drawing her abdominals in and up, lifting her heart, and the arms are working and engaged. You feel good, Sarah? Absolutely. You look like a goddess. <laughs> great. Hey, will you show us an anti-ballet leg lift? This one's easy to get. It promotes your strength in your standing leg. It really targets your hip and even your side waist. Look at Sarah's abs. She's working so hard. She's just trembling a little bit, huh? <laughs> Next, let's move to the one-legged squat. This is another Yoga Booty Ballet signature move. She's gonna put her weight on her heel. She's gonna really squeeze her buns and pull her abs in up at the top. When you go down, you get a great stretch in the glute. When you come up, you get a firm engagement of the low abdominal and the pelvic floor. Now you can add the arms if you like. Look at the grace and poise that you yourself will be able to express while you're doing yoga booty ballet. Our unique abdominal exercises use the YBB squishy ball. The ball helps to engage the lower abs. She's also squeezing the ball so it really tones the inner thigh and the crunch also engages the upper abs. Let's take that ball and place it in position three. That's legs up, ball under the calves. This is an awesome abdominal exercise because it actually keeps you from kicking the legs and using momentum. The Yoga Booty Ballet ab exercises feel great. It's not torture like doing hundreds of crunches. We've discovered that the YBB Squishy Ball is the most effective way to engage your abdominals, creating a flat stomach and a slimmer waistline. It'll really tone you and start up that six pack you always wanted. There's always a funky move, there's Bad Kitty and Stir the Pod and just these wacky, crazy movements that you would think, how can I have this much fun and still have results with something? It makes you want to come back and do it over and over again and it never gets boring. It really helps your self-esteem, your mood, how you feel about how you look, everything you can stick that tape in and not feel that you have to be like anybody else. You can follow it the way that you want to, take it at your own pace. With the Yoga Booty Ballet video, oh my god, you put it in, you feel renewed. You like listening to the music, watching these beautiful girls move. You feel like you can do it, mm -hmm. and, and then you start seeing results and you're just like, wow, this is it. For the first time ever, you can have fun while completely transforming your body all in just 10 weeks, guaranteed, with Yoga Booty Ballet. T and Gillian's Yoga Booty Ballet from Beachbody.com is the easy-to-follow in-home fitness system designed for rapid weight loss and total body sculpting. And it's the one workout you'll actually look forward to because it's pure feel-good fun. Simply follow along on your VCR or DVD for 10 weeks and watch your body take shape day by day. For years, Beachbody.com's programs have helped thousands to lose significant weight and transform their bodies. Now the Yoga Booty Ballet videos are giving these Beachbody success stories a new way to make fitness fun as they continue to lose weight and feel great. I lost 49 pounds and 18 inches. I lost 20 and a half pounds and a fantastic 24 inches. The secret is Yoga Booty Ballet's unique combination of moves you can't find anywhere else. Each Yoga Booty Ballet workout contains an easy, rejuvenating yoga routine, 
a fun calorie burning cardio dance segment, and ballet inspired total body sculpting. These unique yoga booty ballet moves will transform your body from where it is today to the body you've always wanted in just 10 weeks, guaranteed. Since this is the world premiere introduction of the complete Yoga Booty Ballet system, we're making an unprecedented offer. When you order, you'll receive the rehearsal, a step-by-step -step introduction to the moves that anyone can master in under 10 minutes. Also included is the Yoga Booty Ballet introductory video, a fun calorie burning body sculpting workout. There's even an intense, totally unique app sculpting routine featuring the Yoga Booty Ballet squishy ball that target the problem areas of your lower abs and inner thighs. To complete your video set, you'll also get the Yoga Booty Ballet Advanced Workout, a powerful, all-encompassing Yoga Booty Ballet workout in under an hour. And so that you'll have everything you need to get incredible results, we're including the Yoga Booty Ballet Squishy Ball absolutely free. You'll get lean, sexy abs even faster. You'll also receive the Goddess Guidebook, which walks you through the simple 10-week program and includes an easy step-by-step -step nutrition guide, plus motivation and tips from Gillian and T. 10 weeks of Yoga Booty Ballet classes in Hollywood can cost up to $900, but you won't pay $900 or even $600. In fact, you won't even pay $100. Call now during this special TV offer and the complete Yoga Booty Ballet system is yours on closed caption VHS or DVD for just three easy payments of only $19.95. And if you call now, you'll receive these incredible bonuses at no extra charge. You'll get a full year of free unlimited access to Beachbody.com support network. You'll connect with thousands of other women as they use Yoga Booty Ballet to transform their bodies and encourage each other to feel good about themselves every step of the way. This internet support package is valued at $180, but is yours free. Plus, you'll also receive the Dancer's 7-Day Diet, which shows you how to use your Yoga Booty Ballet routines and eat right so you can lose 7 pounds or more in your first 7 days or whenever you need a quick slim down. So in 7 days, you lost 7 pounds and 8 and a quarter inches. Yes! 6 whole pounds in one Six. week. <laughs> These bonuses at $200 value are yours absolutely free when you order, but you must call now. Women everywhere are experiencing the dramatic, body-transforming results of Yoga Booty Ballet. Now it's your turn. Don't miss this chance for your own total body transformation. That's why when you call in the next 22 minutes, we'll take one entire payment off. That's right, you'll get this entire package, a $260 value, all for just two easy payments of only $19.95. We're so confident that you'll experience results similar to these actual Yoga Booty Ballet believers that we've extended our guarantee from 30 days to an amazing 10 weeks. This gives you enough time to achieve dramatic changes. If after 10 weeks you're not satisfied with your results, simply return Yoga Booty Ballet for a full refund of the purchase price. Yoga Booty Ballet is a Beachbody.com exclusive. It can only be bought online or by calling this toll-free number. It's not sold in stores, so have your credit card ready. Or we accept check payments right Right over the phone. If you call in the next 22 minutes, Yoga Booty Ballet is yours for just two payments of $19.95. Call 1-800-509-5553. That's 1-800-509-5553. Beachbody.com recently brought some of its most loyal customers to South Beach, Florida, where they got the once-in-a-lifetime chance to work out side-by-side -side with Gillian and T at the prestigious Miami Fitness Festival. Afterwards, they shared their amazing success stories and how Yoga Booty Ballet and Beachbody have helped them keep fitness fun and get results. I feel better now than I've ever felt in my life as far as being physically fit and active. I lost 49 pounds and 18 inches. I never thought in a million years that it would happen so quickly. I look better than when we got married, and it's just, who would have ever thought that you looked better? <laughs> Within a very short amount of time, I started to see huge changes. I have been able to lose 30 pounds and over 25 inches. It's possible to get a body that you never dreamed of getting. It's possible to start from somewhere and get beyond your goal. I think Yoga Booty Ballet is extremely effective because you're working every part of your body. They focus on your midsection, and they focus on your booty, of course. You're doing yoga, which is extremely wonderful, and you're dancing. Believe it or not, you can have fun working out and losing weight. I've lost 20 pounds, 17 and a half inches. I feel absolutely fantastic. I feel healthy, I feel strong, 
I feel like I can conquer the world. <laughs> we want every woman to become the strong, sexy, powerful woman she was born to be. Yoka Booty Ballet makes you feel proud of the body and the booty you were born with, while at the same time, it shapes your body to look the best it can possibly be. I don't know that I could go a day without thinking about Yoga Booty Ballet. I lost 14 and a half pounds and 21 inches. It's a complete transformation. I metamorphosed into something else. It's wonderful. Like everybody says, oh my God, Susie, what have you been doing? I'm like, Yoga Booty Ballet! I lost 10 pounds and over 15 inches. Yoga Booty Ballet is an amazing program. It's something I'll do for the rest of my life. And I'd never ever say that about any exercise program I've ever done. Yoga Booty Ballet got its start in the heart of Hollywood, and major film and TV stars are among its most devoted fans. Why? Because it gets them looking good for the cameras fast. Here's NYPD Blue Star Sharon Lawrence. I choose Yoga Booty Ballet as the way that I spend my time to work out, because I like the pace of the workout, and I love the enjoyment that I see everybody in the class and on the video sharing. I also like the fact that it's low impact. It really does incorporate so many aspects of femininity. The yoga allows you to get centered and really calm. I like that hip hop funky stuff that allows us to exercise muscles in the lower parts of our body which we want to make sure stay toned. And ballet really helps improve that posture and it creates a gracefulness and a centeredness that I think permeates throughout the day. Yoga Booty Ballet gives you the optimal opportunity to burn calories, which means lose weight, to have fun, which means energize and change your day and your perspective about yourself. It's a great way to incorporate all those things that make you healthier and happier. you do this great dance workout and then yoga and ballet. I mean, they're my three favorite things to do. And when you're done, you really feel like you've accomplished something magnificent. It's just a different kind of workout. I'm not coordinated at all. And so it really does make you feel encouraged and accepted. I haven't worked out for a long time and I really felt comfortable. Even though I didn't know the steps and everything, I was enjoying it within my own self. When I started this program, I was around size eight, size nine. So with Yoga Booty Ballet, I have lost 18 and a half pounds and 25 inches all over my body. I want to buy some clothes because I want to have, you know, just change everything. It changed the way that I look and the way that I feel. So I got this pair of pants and it's like they fit me and they were size two. Never in my life I showed my belly. Never had a two pieces swimming suit until now. This is the first time in my life. And um, that's really a major accomplishment for me. If you do it, you're really going to change your life. You're going to change the way that you feel about yourself. And hey, you're going to change your body. I look hot. <laughs> Major Hollywood stars like Sharon Lawrence, Christina Wagner, Tori Spelling, as well as busy working moms, women of all ages, shapes, and sizes are transforming their bodies and their lives with Yoga Booty Ballet. Now it's your turn. Since this is the world premiere introduction of the complete Yoga Booty Ballet system, we're making an unprecedented offer. When you order, you'll receive the rehearsal, a step-by-step -step introduction to the moves that anyone can master in under 10 minutes. Also included is the Yoga Booty Ballet introductory video, a fun calorie burning body sculpting workout. There is even an intense, totally unique ab sculpting routine featuring the Yoga Booty Ballet squishy ball that target the problem areas of your lower abs and inner thighs. To complete your video set, you'll also get the Yoga Booty Ballet Advanced Workout, a powerful all encompassing Yoga Booty Ballet workout in under an hour. And so that you'll have everything you need to get incredible results, we're including the Yoga Booty Ballet squishy ball absolutely free. You also receive the Goddess Guidebook, which includes an easy step-by-step -step nutrition guide, plus motivation and tips from Gillian and T. Call now during this special TV offer, and the complete Yoga Booty Ballet system is yours on closed caption VHS or DVD for just three easy payments of only $19.95. And if you call now, you will receive these incredible bonuses at no extra charge. You'll get a full year of free unlimited access to Beachbody.com support network. You'll connect with thousands of other women as they use Yoga Booty Ballet to transform their bodies and encourage each other to feel good about themselves every step of the way. 
This internet support package is valued at $180, but is yours free. Plus, you'll also receive the Dancer's 7-Day Diet, which shows you how to use your yoga booty ballet routines and eat right so you can lose 7 pounds or more in your first 7 days or whenever you need a quick slim down. These bonuses at $200 value are yours absolutely free when you order, but you must call now. Women everywhere are experiencing the dramatic, body-transforming results of yoga booty ballet. Now it's your turn. Don't miss this chance for your own total body transformation. That's why when you call in the next 12 minutes, we'll take one entire payment off. That's right, you'll get this entire package, a $260 value, all for just two easy payments of only $19.95. We're so confident that you'll experience results similar to these actual Yoga Booty Ballet believers that we've extended our guarantee from 30 days to an amazing 10 weeks. This gives you enough time to achieve dramatic changes. If after 10 weeks you're not satisfied with your results, simply return Yoga Booty Ballet for a full refund of the purchase price. Yoga Booty Ballet is a Beachbody.com exclusive. It can only be bought online or by calling this toll-free number. It's not sold in stores, so have your credit card ready. Or we accept check payments right over the phone. If you call in the next 12 minutes, Yoga Booty Ballet is yours for just two payments of $19.95. Call 1-800-509-5553. That's 1-800-509-5553. What makes Yoga Booty Ballet so unique? It's because Yoga Booty Ballet is for anyone, large or small, who wants to get in shape and feel great about the way they look. I see it so much in my booty, which is so great because it was really large before. And now everything just seems to slide right on. With Yoga Booty Ballet, you don't have a buffed up, thick guy's body. You have a beautiful, lean, curved woman's body. Only Yoga Booty Ballet has a unique blend of body shaping yoga, fat burning dance, ballet inspired total body sculpting, and the amazing ab flattening results from the Yoga Booty Ballet Squishy Ball. You'll immediately see changes in your body as you develop the lean, toned body you've always wanted. It's really different. You're like, oh my god, I'm doing yoga. Oh my <laughs> god, I'm doing ballet. Oh my god, I've got a butt. Oh my <laughs> god, I, my stomach's torn up. It, it's just amazing. Instead of going out and getting a, a Pilates or an abs and a dance and a cardio, different tapes, you get it all in one workout, and that's what I think is wonderful. I was 25 pounds heavier, yeah. and I felt really like it was hopeless. I did. I oh. felt that I was going to be overweight, I was never going to commit myself to exercise, and it was, frankly, very depressing. And when I found Yoga Booty Ballet, it became an exercise that became so important to me. I mean, really important to me. I'm a mother, I'm a wife, I'm a grandmother, and everyone in my life knows that when I have Yoga Booty Ballet, nothing else gets in the way, um, even babysitting. That's <laughs> true. Now people think I've had, like, some, some work done because <laughs> It has really lifted and, you know, it just sculpted my butt. You got my booty. Lower butt. I've got mm -hmm. booty, girl. I've got that. <laughs> I have come such a distance in the last 10 weeks that now there's no turning back. It's awesome to watch the different form and the tone change before my eyes. I actually released 20 and a half pounds and over 18 inches. Yoga Booty Ballet is for everyone, any size, any age. For anyone who says that after a certain point in your life you can't change your body, I would say I have evidence to the contrary. With the Yoga Booty Ballet program, I lost 20 and a half pounds and it's just happened very easily. It's been an amazing experience. Knowing and being forced that my body was changing, I knew I had to make other changes and I chose to do Yoga Booty Ballet. I've lost 15 pounds and 14 inches. You have to do it, and I know half two is a strong word. It does work and you'll feel great. My clothes are fitting better. People are noticing and they wanna know, what are you doing? You may have tried a million things in the past that didn't work, but you've never tried anything like Yoga Booty Ballet. <laughs> we guarantee you'll get amazing results you can feel and see. You'll feel more confident and beautiful after your very first workout and you'll see a dramatic difference in your body in the first two weeks. And that's a promise. So come on, join the Yoga Booty Ballet community. There's nothing to lose. So now you know the slim down secret that's reshaping the finest bodies in Hollywood. 
Entertainment Weekly declares Hollywood's body elite line up for Yoga Booty Ballet. And In Touch Weekly writes the stars are getting their groove on and their unwanted pounds off. We've shown you how Yoga Booty Ballet is the perfect combination of new school yoga, simple dance, and booty sculpting fitness. You've seen how we take the mystery out of yoga and make it easy for anyone. How the simple dance moves are easy and fun. You'll blast away fat and calories as you lose weight from head to toe. How the ballet-inspired total body sculpting gives you long, lean muscles while reshaping your body and your booty. And how the unique ab routine makes it easier than ever to achieve the sleek, sexy waistline you've always wanted. You've also seen the amazing before and after pictures from real women who joined the Yoga Booty Ballet community and changed their lives. Now it's your turn. Since this is the world premiere introduction of the complete Yoga Booty Ballet system, we're making an unprecedented offer. When you order, you'll receive the rehearsal, a step-by-step -step introduction to the moves that anyone can master in under 10 minutes. Also included is the Yoga Booty Ballet introductory video, a fun calorie.